It's 2 p.m. Detroit, and you know what that means. Detroit media icon Ryan Armani, University of Michigan great Braylon Edwards, and of course, Maz are about to take over on Woodward Sports. Every day, 2 to 4 p.m., it's the best Detroit sports talk on Detroit's best sports network. Woodward Sports. Hey, let's go! Tuesday show, April 9th, 2024. The Braylon Edwards Show with Maz. Um, oh, oh my, is, is my name still on the show? Oh, thank thought, God for that. I thought I saw Anson Wells. Oh there. my gosh. <laughs> Holy What's Toledo, up, Braylon Edwards, I good miss, afternoon to you. you. Come on, give you a hug, Come on man. over here. Hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we're back. The gang's all back. The gang is all here. in the building. Here. Peace by that. You kidding me? Are you kidding me? The Armani and Edwards with Maz program. There we go. That's right. Oh, baby. Here we are on Tuesday, April 9th. Woodward Sports Network. WoodwardSports.com. Fox2Detroit.com and the Fox Local app. Bray, how you doing, my man? I'm good, man. Uh, just getting back in town from North Carolina. Went to a uh, music festival, J. Cole's Music Festival, Dreamville. Had an amazing time out there. Beautiful state. North Carolina is really green. Kind of reminds me of Michigan a little bit, but... The hills, the Appalachians, that my man over there, Peace Pie Back, point out. Great, got new hairdo. Oh my braided, gosh, braided, do you braided, look good? Braided up a little bit, so. Well, that's for the draft. You're making your NFL draft uh, debut 100%. at the podium, you know what I mean? I don't know if I'm going with the braids or the curls. I'm, I'm trying to figure that out. Okay. The, the braids do look nice, though, man. How was Florida? Oh, man, Florida was great. I friggin' love Florida. Uh, it's a great state, and it reminds me of relaxation and vacation, yeah. you know? On the beach for a week. Uh, uh, tremendous. Kids spring break was last week, so we took the kids down there. It was fantastic. And then yesterday, I took off because I drove to Indiana to pick up a dog. What type of dog? Oh, Show me the just, a little, just a little dog. It's a Cavapoo. It's seven pounds. It's 10 weeks old. Now, the big question uh, my, how much now, it we, uh, Well, <laughs> my wife knows that. It's... Yeah. Um, we we had to put our dog down uh, in September and uh, just g- got another one now. So all right, congrats! Incredible stuff. The great Tom Mazaway. Good afternoon to you. Hey fellas, what's up? Happy sixty third anniversary to Sammy and Claire Mazaway. Oh, hey. get out of here! Sixty three years 63 of wedded bliss. Glorious years. Arguing with each other. other. <laughs> sixty three <laughs> yelling years. The Mazaways. Love it, you guys. What would they tell you is the key to a successful marriage? 80-20. My dad has lost most of his hearing, right. so that would probably be it. <laughs> That's fantastic stuff. Want to say hello to Pete Spivak. Want to say hello to Noah over there in the audio booth as well. Uh, Pete, you got the old uh, sunglasses on today. Is it getting bright in that booth? or? For it, it, I'm just I'm just trying to hang out with how it looks outside, you know. I just I feel the way it looks outside. You should have been here yesterday for this with the, the solar eclipse. Oh my freaky, gosh, man. that was awesome. <laughs> it was crazy. We all took our turns outside with a pair of glasses. Really? Rachel gave us glasses. Each one of us went outside for about a minute. Yeah, and it was it was so cool. It was really yeah. cool. It's how I envision the the end of the world to be, though. I mean, okay. in all serious, okay. like like everybody going outside, gathering together. Looking up, yeah, Boom. isn't right? Yeah, I mean, I isn't really that pictured the end of the world? Isn't yeah, that what you think the end of the world will be like? You ever watch Armageddon? Yeah, yeah. they're all looking up like that. When's it's it gonna asteroid, hit? Meteor, right. or something like that. The Some end point. of the world, according to me, with my luck, will be the Lions in the Super Bowl at the goal line, ready to win the game, and then the world ends. That's how it would end. For me, with my luck. <laughs> so you have thought about the end of the world. No, I actually haven't. I never do. I never yeah. do. I never did. Right. Actually. Uh, Except I watched that uh, that movie on Netflix uh, about a month ago. What was the name of that? The, the Obama movie. Yeah. With uh, Julia Roberts. It was. It was a uh, uh, leave the world leave behind the world or something. Leave the world behind. It was about a cyber attack. And They're how trying to tell you how they tell. And look, another ship. Remember the ship that took down uh, yep. the. Uh, the Franklin the, Bridge, yeah, or whatever Baltimore the hell, like Bridge, the Keyworth Bridge, or the Key Franklin. Yeah, there was a bridge that almost hit the Verrazano Bridge. Get out of in here in New York and Jersey. Yeah, the bridge, the 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 freighter lost power. Get out of here just before the bridge. Wow. Yeah, Man. just two days ago. A I didn't ago, see that. One day ago, Jeez. I did not see that. That you scared the living daylight out of me. Bet. 
You're in Florida living your best life. Oh, man, I'm not paying attention to anything. That ain't it's good, good to man. tap out, though. It, it is. It's good to I do think it is absolutely good to tap yeah. out. There's no doubt about For that, sure. Bray. Um, but, sports. Yeah, you they know what? On. So this sports thing is – now, I'm going to – like, I don't think this is an old man – thing okay. for a minute okay and anybody in the chat feel free to call me and i know it's been like this forever i know it's been i know glenn rice uh was uh, rumiel robinson was shooting free throws at like 11 30 p.m at night yeah i know that okay back in 1989 i know nothing is going to change that no 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 amount of uh complaining is going to change this but I have to say, just for my own mental Maybe health. Maybe if the ratings suck, it'll change. It is the dumbest thing you can ever do to your sport to have a championship game played at 9.20 p.m. Not at 9. 9.20 p.m. 22, actually. I went to bed. I, I, I watched the first half. I tried to stay up. I fell asleep at halftime. It was over. I did not see the second half, although I knew exactly what was going to happen in the in, yeah, in we the knew second it half. 100%. Uh, but Braylon, congrats to UConn, the first repeat national champion since Florida did it. So uh, you've had Duke 91 92, Florida do it in the 2000s, and now UConn do it um, in 23 and 24. It's their sixth championship. In 25 years. They're that is remarkable. A blue blood, man. Absolutely. Um, I, I hate the eight, uh, excuse me, the 920 start time. It is ridiculous. How about it's on TBS? Now, look, I like TBS. I like TNT. Yeah. But the average Joe thinks it's on regular national television. Now, I had a guy tell me yesterday, hey, where you been the last five years? They, they changed from CBS to TBS back and forth. I forgot, to be honest right. with you. But you're putting your national championship game on a cable network. I'm just telling you right now that I don't think that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. Now, the same guys do the game, but why isn't it on the major channel of CBS or Fox or NBC or whatever. It, to me, that, that's a loss right there. And the only way they'll change this is like when the girls will talk about it. If they don't, if those ratings from last night are crap, and I don't know if they are, but that's the only thing that's going to change the 920 thing, right? Everyone complains, well, how about the West Coast? They got to get home at six o'clock. Nobody to watch gets the game. home at six o'clock. Yeah, and the, nobody's working a nine to five on the West Coast. Nobody works a nine to five on the West Coast. West Coast, and eighty percent of the United States, eighty percent of America, lives in the Eastern and Central Time Zone. Braylon, yeah. So it, it doesn't make sense. I don't know why they do it this way. They do it this way. Somebody had a great idea earlier today on um, Twitter. Uh, I forgot who it was. I saw it. They're like. With the elevation of the women's game, they should really do a doubleheader championship Ooh, yeah. game on Sunday. Women at 3, men at 6.30. Yeah, but the men play Saturday. Play Friday. The girls play Friday. Play Do a doubleheader Final Four. Can you do that? I mean, it'll never happen. So what No, that's eight saying? games. You know? wow. I mean, that's four games. Yeah. That's two women, two men, and then a women and a men. Yeah, I guess you're right. Either way, it doesn't work. It don't. I don't mind the Monday night game. Yeah. I don't. I like the Monday night. But these, I like the Monday night game. But smarten up and yeah. do what, what Monday night football did. They smartened up. Got it. And they early. kick at 8.30. Yeah. All right? Make it 8.30 for How crying about out seven? loud. I'm just saying. 8.30. Yeah. 7 o'clock was the men's, excuse me, the football national championship, right. right? That's right. They changed, so maybe basketball will change eventually. I don't know, man. I got nothing. I feel like it's going to stay the same. Uh, for, for whatever reason, they're locked into that time slot, that time spot. They vetted the process, and for some reason, this seems to be their working time slot at 920 on a Monday. I like you. I watched the first half, mm -hmm. tuned in a little bit in the second half, turned to American Idol. <laughs> I kind of tapped out and, <laughs> fell, and then fell asleep at the end of the day. I was enjoying it. I thought the game went well, went quick in the first half. Second half, Purdue couldn't hit anything. Zach Eady missed three layup slash dunks, and I knew the game was over then. So I tired. Up, I wound up finishing third uh, in my uh, bracket, so I made some money, and I hit the square for the final score. Really? Hit the square for the final score. I'm glad you brought Zach Eady up. I mean, we're probably going to get to the game at some yeah, point. Yeah, do it. Um, what do you make of Zach Eady? Obviously, the rhetoric is 7-4. He's not going – the game has moved away from the big man, the center. You know, outside of Jokic, you got guys that shoot threes now. There's no really centers that just play the post. I don't know, man. 
I like Zach Eady. Like what I saw out of him, seven four. Like you listen to Mark Few, the coach from Gonzaga, he was saying that he's never faced a guy like that in Gonzaga. Twenty five years, he's never placed a dominant player like that. Thirty seven points last night. He was blocking shots. He's also not Sean Bradley. He's not some lanky no. toothpick. Like he's actually a sizable dude, muscles. I mean, I wouldn't draft him top five, but I definitely think there's a spot and a space for him in this NBA. But the 20, 20th pick him back in the first round, I think he'd be good. Um, there's definitely a spot for him in yeah. the NBA, and I heard somebody on ESPN, uh, maybe it was I, I don't remember, maybe it was Colin. Colin said something to the effect of, um, you know, the NBA has lost half its audience since Michael Jordan retired. Yeah, and part of that is because the game is boring now. The the, the, the basketball has just become dunks and three pointers, and that's it. Yeah. Um, the the big game, the footwork, the finesse. I think it really is why a lot of people tuned in to this March Madness. This was really good team basketball, I thought, for the most part. March Madness delivered. Um, I am not a college basketball guy at all, and I was so into this tournament. I mean, you had the dominant Purdue, or excuse me, the dominant UConn yep. team. You had that that alpha up there yeah. everybody else was going for it maybe oakland's run got me a little bit more interested okay. uh because of the draw against kentucky and then the win and then taking nc state to overtime and everything like that but i thought this was a really really good tournament and i actually preferred this style of basketball to the nba yeah. i thought it was much a much better version of of basketball than anything the NBA can produce right now. You know, all the one-on-one -on -one battles and, and all the three-point shots and things like that. Um, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, 100%. Uh, dang, I had something perfect for it. Oh, speaking of that, and I'll let you go, man. I told you John Calipari's butt was going to get fired. Oh, yeah. Well, he, was, was, well, he left for money. It, he also got fired. He was like, look, we're going to let you take a deal. But we need you up out of here. You can't win. Go ahead, man. Sorry. I just wanted to say, we had Tim McCormick yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, we asked him about the college game. Do the NBA players follow it? And he said, the people I've talked to in the NBA, they think it's too slow of a game for them mm -hmm. to watch. They do not, a lot of them do not watch college basketball. I, I was going to disagree with him because I saw LeBron uh, writing in and writing in about Caitlin Clark and all that kind of stuff. They got to be watching Mm -hmm. These guys, if they're not playing, they got to be watching this. I, it's one of my favorite things in the world, these three weeks of basketball. And I am not – I don't watch but a game maybe during the regular season. NBA, hardly a game during the NBA season. I'll go to a game, but I'll hardly watch it on TV. But I am locked in on March Madness. And I thought it delivered again. And Connecticut was a great story. And Dan Hurley, man, he's like an in-your-face type of guy. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. I, does, he rubs people the wrong way. A lot of people the wrong way. I kind of dig it, but I if, love it too. If, yeah. if you don't like UConn, then you'd hate him. He's one of those guys. You're either gonna hate him or I love him. him. I love him. I mean, you know yeah. what he said after 2020, they didn't make the tournament for yep. like three years. He said, "You better get us now." He said, "Because I'm about to turn this program around. We're about we're to turn coming, up." He said. Well. Back-to-back -back championships, he did it his way, put his brother on the bench side by side. They teach the old-school game, pass, pass, look for the open man, set it up, play defense. I think that's what I love about him around this time is you get to see how the game's supposed to be played. Look, I love the NBA. I love the ISOs. I love guys going one-on-one. -on -one. I love shooting from half court. But it's not the game you, that I you know, I grew up watching, like with Jordan and Pippen and all those guys and the bad boys. So I think you get to see everybody Get a piece of March Madness. Every player, everybody has a role, the sixth man, the seventh man. You get to see coaches like Dan Hurley's intensity. But the NBA game is a lot faster, and I don't think those guys really watch it. I think they watch Caitlin Clark. Yeah. I think they watch Caitlin Clark versus Angel Reese, Paige Beckers, but I don't think they're watching, watching like a whole season. UConn averaged 23-point wins. That's insane. It's the biggest, widest margin of victory in – March Madness history. And they did it with virtually a new team. Yes. You know, that they is, lost a bunch of guys to yeah, the NBA. Yeah, that's one of, one of the things afterwards that Dan Hurley said. He believes this run was more impressive than Florida, more impressive than Duke, because it's essentially with a new team. Those other guys, okay. uh, Duke and Florida, that uh, went back-to-back -back in the last dude. 25 years, same guys. Yoakam Noah, Absolutely. Al Horford. You know, yeah. uh, Grant Hill. 
Uh, oh, the Duke, yeah, yeah, yeah. Duke, Grant, Grant Hill, but Florida, My yeah, 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 Florida, uh, Joe Kim Noah, and Corey Brewer, Al Horford, you know, look at he's still playing, yeah, <laughs> Al Horford's right. still playing, Billy exactly. Donovan, oh, yeah, <laughs> what did he um, take over, OKC, he coached yeah. the OKC, and then there's an element, last night I wanted UConn to win because I, I again, I just, I think sports is better when you have that dynasty yeah. type team to root for and root against um but the big 10 they lose in the women's uh final they lose in the men's final michigan state is still the last big 10 champion in basketball that is yeah. incredible they fall now to 0 and 12 in the ncaa tournament title games uh, men and women since 2000 that is wild and then the big east who got only three teams in the freaking league in, in the march madness has won four of the last eight national championships st john's yeah. nearly beat uconn at the end of the season Can and I st john's was left out so was villanova and so was the NIT champion, Seton Hall Pirates. Seton Hall. Let me ask you this question, Maz. Why isn't UConn given more respect as it relates to a basketball powerhouse? I understand your They are now. I understand the Blue Bloods. You got your UCLA's. You got your Kansas, Kentucky. Those are the Blue Bloods. But they got six championships. Yeah. And like when you think UConn, you think winners. Like, you say UConn, I'm thinking titles. Whether yep. it's men's or women's basketball, they're winning titles. You see Ray they Allen there get... last night? He was supporting the team. Up to six. Mm. Man, I mean, they did. He didn't win, did he? Khalid El Amin. I so. Khalid El Amin. Oh, Rip Hamilton. How about yeah. Rip? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Rip Hamilton. Absolutely. They had all those guys there. You know, it, it was great. And, and look, for as great as Caitlin Clark is and for as great as that women's run was, um, the men, and again, I don't know what the ratings will be. They're not out yet. They'll yeah. come out tonight, they probably. Won't than, they won't be bigger than Caitlin. I don't think they're going to be bigger than Caitlin Clark. And I do think this was a one-off. I don't think all of a sudden you're going to see a lot of people uh, watch women's college basketball. No disrespect. It just is what it is. 18.7 million viewers, up 89% from last year when she played, up 285% from 2022 the most watched men's uh most watched basketball game of any kind men's or women's college or pro since 2019 it outrated the nba finals it outrated the world series it outrated big 10 championship pac-12 championship big 12 championship football games yeah we're talking about yep. uh, more so than the masters final round um oh which is coming up this week you know, every now and again, again, there are those transcendent superstars that help lift a game. Um, Caitlin Clark is and was Magic Johnson and Larry Bird. She was Michael Jordan. And um, we have seen players, uh, you know, play basketball above the rim. Yeah. Like, But when Steph Curry came around, we've never seen anything like that. Yeah. We have seen great women's players before. Not right? like this. But not. But that's my point, yeah. Maz. Not but even not, close. Not like this. Yeah. She just plays differently. And that is why I think so much intrigue yeah. uh, was out there. And then... Also, you, go ahead. Go, no, you, you put me on her two years yeah. ago. So yeah. Also, too, you just look at it from this standpoint. You just give it, really give it a credit. You just want to give her the credit. Look at South Carolina and what they have accomplished over the last three years. Dawn Staley's won three championships in four years. Mm -hmm. She, the team is, I think they're eighty-two and zero mm -hmm. right now since that loss last year to who? Caitlin Clark. That team is stacked. They're gonna have two players drafted in the top five this year. They had the number one pick last year, and they had to, they had her for three years. Um, that's how good that team is. Kaylin Clark, nobody else on her team is that good. No. Nobody else on her team is that good. Martin's not good. Skalky's not that good. So for her to go as far as she did, for her to go tit for tat with the juggernaut to the South Carolina with really no help, I think that's how you really got to assess how cold she is and what she really does. Like, that LSU team that they beat, mm. they're a really good team. They got multiple players. Flaje, they got Angel Reese. Beat them, too. So when you look at it from that standpoint, like, I've never seen anything like her. Maya Moore was my favorite basketball player, female, in the last 25 years. Caitlin Clark has never seen anything like this, and you never will. I've never watched Cheryl Miller play. I don't know what the hell she was like, right. so she's the GOAT to me. I'm going to watch the WNBA. I am going to watch it when she's on it. 
If she, I, I'm going to watch you, it. You're going to watch Caitlin Clark. Right. You're not going to watch. Right. Just like I watched Tiger yeah. Woods play right. golf. Right. Okay. I'm there, there's watch another her. name. When Tiger Woods yeah. came along, it was just different. That's it. And and um, I watched know, the women's championship. So, game. I watched the women's ca- championship game at the Reds game. Right. In 75 degrees on Sunday. <laughs> I know. I had my phone out. Dude, I was in Florida watching the women's final four game. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like on my phone. Um, it's funny. I saw a tweet. Uh, I think it was from the Babylon B or whatever. It was uh, Caitlin Clark uh, now will remove herself from the limelight and join the WNBA. <laughs> <laughs> she's going to put the WNBA on, on the map. Ma- right. uh, she's going to put them on the map. She is. He, 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 but you, you need you need a couple other ones, though. Like you need to cut like when well, you, you had, got angels in there. Sure, but angels not that good. Like angel, angel at LSU was good. Like angels not in in Caitlin's class as a player. Just just my honesty. Right. You need a couple. Like in basketball, when the ratings weren't big, you had Magic. Mm. You had Bird. Then eventually you got Michael Jordan. Uh, eight years later, but I think they need a couple more like Caitlin. Who's the kid at USC? The freshman, Juju. Uh, Ju- no, she's nice. She's yeah. Yeah, she, she'll be there. Never Juju, heard of her. Juju Watkins. Juju Watkins, she had fifty one earlier this year. Here's you just no no go ahead. You just, uh, I you was just need just a couple more. Go to a little post game from Caitlin Clark. Here's what she had to say after the game. <laughs> yeah, it's certainly been a special year and to be honest, like after last year I was kind of like, Well, how do I top how do we top doing what we did last year and somehow, some way, every single person in our locker room believed and to be honest, this year was probably more special than last year. Um you know, the teams we had to go through to get to this point. Um, you know, we won the Big Ten tournament. Uh, we lost two players that were three-year starters for our program. And to be back in this position and um, come out here and battle, I mean, South Carolina is just so good. Like, there's only so much you can do. I mean, Cardoso has 17 rebounds. They have 51 as a team. We have 29. Like, hard to win a basketball game like that. You basically got to shoot perfect at that point. And, um, you know, I'm just proud of our group. We, you know, we never back down, and um, you know, we gave it everything we got. I think for me, is just the emotions will probably hit me over the next couple of days, and I don't have much time to, you know, sit around and sulk and be upset. And I don't think that's what I'm about either. Is you know, yeah, I'm sad we lost this game, but I'm also so proud of myself. I'm so proud of my teammates. I'm so proud of this program. Um, there's a lot to be proud of, but. You know, there's going to be tears. It is sad that this is all over, and this is the last time I'm going to put on an Iowa jersey. So um, I think just reflecting back and, you know, soaking in everything that I was able to do because basically anybody other than me and Coach Bluter never thought this was possible. It's kind of interesting right there. It seemed like she uh showing more of like individual side. Like she said, she pointed out the laps and rebounds. Like, they had 51, we only had 29. Well, I'm proud of myself was the first thing she said. She kind of threw her teammates on the bus maybe a little bit. I don't know. I didn't take it like that. I mean, I could see how it was. Yeah. I could see how that was, uh, how how you could get there. Yeah. I didn't I didn't take it like that. But I, I name me a player that had more weight on, on their shoulders for a sport than Caitlin Clark. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're literally talking Tiger yeah. Woods territory. Um, you can so, go way back to Henry Ser- Aaron. Serena Williams. Henry Aaron. Well, that's different. Though. That, that's yeah, different. that was. Well, he had the weight of the whole world on his yeah. shoulders. Yeah, I, I know, but that's. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yesterday was 50 years that he hit 715. Right. I'm just um, bringing him up. Yeah, I'm, I'm just talking about athletes more recently yeah. in the last, let's say, 30 years. Okay that had more weight on their shoulders to carry a sport than Caitlin Clark did right now. LeBron James. But I, I'm joking. No, but LeBron, LeBron's a good one because he was on the cover of Sports Illustrated. The chosen one. The chosen one and King James when before he played one NBA game. 18 That years is old. a lot of pressure. Yeah. And he, that's a good one. Yeah. He, um, I don't know if the NBA would have died without him, but... Um, nonetheless, that's a player that so much was expected of him, and he exceeded that expectation. Yeah. Um, this was you're just carrying an entire sport, and nobody really even heard your name before. Right. Uh, you know, maybe at the end of last year when Angel Reese and her got into it, 
Maybe that's the first time they ever heard of Caitlin yeah. Clark's name. Um, but it it was incredible to me. I do. Um, I think it's funny every time. So the people that are giving Caitlin Clark the most grief, yeah, or the most shade, women. Yep, before her, <laughs> women. Yep. I, I Till would, they I, die. I would never like. Women can be so freaking mean. Yeah. Like, what about the uplifting part? What about the yeah? Let's raise women up ah, and let's lift women up. The only people women are the worst the, 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 to the each other. Yeah, one hundred percent to each other. The only people tearing down Caitlin Clark is other women. They can not keep. men. I did not hear one. Man, no, yeah. criticize Caitlin Clark. Facts, not one. If there's one, I'm sure you could find it for me. I'm sure you could find it for me. But almost <laughs> all Hater. of Caitlin Clark's haters, women, are women. Yeah. So much for the let's lift women up, let's raise other women up. Um, Man. She won't be good in WNBA. <laughs> I'm telling you. Listen, man. It I, is crazy. Coming from a family women of women. Women are vicious. Coming from a family of women, I will tell you, since they were a little girl, yep. till they're old ladies in the senior living, they're all going to yap about each other. Oh, 100%. Always. It's just a lifelong thing. That's why like men can make friends we don't care. Like, later in life. You know what I'm saying? You hit 40, you meet a new friend. Oh, he's a cool don't. dude. He's a cool guy. Like women? Like once they hit a certain age, once they hit twenty one, no new friends for them. Did you see her? Did you see how she dressed? Why is she wearing that? Guy she's why she wearing? got that on? Why she, she wore that, that last year? I, oh my god! I didn't like how she. Ate, why did yeah. she drink her? Why, why don't she drink her drink like that? That's un, it's a. Why fact. does she eat like that? Ah, it's a fact. Yeah, one hundred percent. You know how many people have backtracked? Like they were. Yeah, they were, they're all a pot like Sue Bird. Yeah, they're all right. They're, they're all killing her, and right. then they backtrack, right. and now they're killing her again. Right. Yeah. And they'll continue to kill her. Oh, my god! What if she takes that deal with the big three? It's the they hate. will kill her. Oh, yeah. I don't think she'll be able to take it, but if she does, man, <laughs> you know that they're going to try to eat her alive. Oh, uh, my gosh. Dawn Staley luckily wasn't trying to eat her alive. Dawn gave us some great, some yes, great comments did, for the sport. and we have yeah. that. Here's Dawn Staley. I have to congratulate Iowa on an incredible season. Awesome. Awesome. And I, I want to personally thank Caitlin Clark for lifting up our sport. Hush. She carried a she carried a heavy load for our sport, and it just is not going to stop here on the collegiate tour. But when she is the number one pick in the WNBA draft, she's gonna she's gonna lift that league up as well. So so Caitlin Clark, if you're out there, you are one of the goats of our games. That we appreciate you. Thank you, Carl. And that's coming from one of the best bas female basketball players of all time and Dawn Staley, Temple Guard. So that's dope. Like, she mm -hmm. gave Caitlin those flowers. I know it's a tough loss for Caitlin, man, in, in a moment. Class like that is personified. Shout out mm -hmm. to Dawn Staley. Yesterday, uh, the guys uh, on the panel here, I'll call them Stick and Anson, said, uh, well, she's never won a championship. Stick's like, well, I've won just as many championships as Caitlin Clark. <laughs> I've won just as many as Caitlin Clark. So he was disparaging her that she didn't win a championship, yeah. so she can't be considered the greatest. Is, isn't and, it? And I just, I said, okay. Uh, I've had enough of you. Isn't it South crazy? South Carolina is 38 no, They're f fantastic. And she's playing with a bunch of nobodies. Right? Isn't it crazy how this generation, we've gotten to the point now, like, because remember back in the day when we were growing up, Maz, even you a little bit before us, obviously. But good players were good players. Great players were great players, whether they won championships or not. That took you to the next level. Or well, that made you, you know, enshrine obviously the championship. But now all of a sudden, you got to win the championship, but people won't give you any love, won't give you any credit. Like the way they talk about Charles Barkley on Twitter, when anybody that says anything that doesn't have a ring, that hasn't won a championship, they try to downplay what they say, or it doesn't matter right. what their word is, or they because you didn't win the championship. I never won a championship. I I bet I know more about playing wide receiver in the NFL than you do. Like I, I just don't understand. 
like this generation as it relates to that. Yeah. Got to win a championship or nothing. Yeah, I mean. How uh, the hell is Iowa going to beat South Carolina? John Stockton, <laughs> Carl Malone, Charles Barkley, <laughs> Great Patrick players. Ewing. Great players. You know, Dan Larry, Marino. Larry Bird in, Great in uh, college. You know, I mean, either yeah. way, it's fine. Guys, the NFL draft, 16 days Count from today. Uh, Lions have some players in as well. Local prospects day. Uh, if you, they could grab one local guy. Ooh. Who would you like it to be? We'll talk about that next. But first, the message from Pete Spivak. That's right, gentlemen. It is time to wake up Woodward. The morning show here on Woodward Sports right at 8 to 10 a.m. Monday through Friday. You can join Flannel Sam, Matt Broder, KG, JB, and, of course, the great Kool-Aid. Again, every morning right here with Wake Up Woodward, 8 to 10 a.m. on Detroit's number one sports network, Woodward Sports. And, hey, Bray, do you have a second for me, my friend? Can you give me a little bit of the quarterback shake, shake challenge, please? Yeah, sounds good to me. Shake Shack and Woodward Sports want to remind you it is always football season. That's why we're giving you an opportunity to win two tickets to the Detroit home opener. That's right, folks. Detroit Lions, Kings in the North. You get a chance. All you got to do is scan the QR code right now or go to WoodwardSports.com, click the link. You scan the QR code, it registers, it gets you into the challenge. Register today for your chance to win at any Shake Shack. Also, while you're there, try out that Chicken Shack Shake Shack sandwich. Amazing sandwich. Two tickets, QB Challenge. Register now. Thank you to the Detroit Lions. And Sheila Ham for the best season in Lions history. Now it's time to let Brad Holmes cook. Woodward Sports. Where's the most convenient place to get that big fitness energy? It's Planet Fitness. Join today for just $1 down, $10 a month. With over 2,400 locations and equipment for every workout, you can get in, get energized, and get going. And with free fitness training and most clubs open 24 hours, everyone belongs in the judgment-free zone. So join today for $1 down, $10 a month, no commitment, cancel any time. A ton of fun, a ton of sports, and a ton of man meat. Welcome to the Woodward Heavyweights, live daily 5 to 7 p.m. on Woodward Sports. <laughs> Lady Jane's haircuts for men and claim your throne for a king's treatment from one of our talented stylists. Open seven days a week, walk in anytime. Just get to a Lady Jane's today and receive a precision haircut, scalp massage, hot lather neck shave, and a hot towel treatment. A haircut should not be a chore, it should be an experience. And that's exactly what Lady Jane's has to offer. Open seven days a week, walk ins are always welcome. There's always a location near you. Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men, it's wicked awesome. Is that an octopus in your pants, or are you just happy to see me? <laughs> see what I did there? Go Red Wings! From Octopi Experts, Woodward Sports. Planet Fitness, where your fitness is essential, and only $10 a month. They stick true, $10 a month, and what that gets you is access to the judgment-free zone where you can just come in and get a workout in at your own pace you don't have to fear judgment also they got the 30 minute total body workout it's right in the middle of the gym already have it set up for you all you got to do is go in take 30 minutes Ryan Armani has completed that many of times and also also your fitness is essential Planet Fitness Guys, NFL draft sixteen days from today. By the way, have has anybody been downtown lately? If you like, the streets are kind of closed off. They're, they're getting closed. When you go down for opening day uh, on Friday, uh-huh. you saw that some of the streets are starting to close up down okay. there, and that stage is getting bigger by the day. Yeah. Yep. It's gonna be fun. I, I haven't been down there in a minute. It, I, I'm I'm looking forward to the NFL draft. It's gonna be a time to highlight the. Um, I hope we get a day like city. today. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, 70 and sunny, are you kidding me? And, you know, because the Lions are so um, good now, for lack of a better way to say it, they're picking at the end of the draft. They don't have a high draft pick. Um, I'm way more interested and way more intrigued to see what happens with these quarterbacks at the top of the draft, namely J.J. McCarthy. But even, you know, the other three, right? We know Caleb's going number one, but even to see what happens with – Washington at two or, or Arizona at four, yeah. uh, New England at three. Do they pick a quarterback? I mean, there is some real yeah. intrigue when it comes to this draft. I, I'm pretty excited about it. Yeah, also, I'm more excited about that than oh, to yeah. see who the Lions get, to be honest with you. Yeah, I'm excited for the trade-ups. I think you're going to have a bunch of trade-ups, people trading up for quarterbacks. I mean, hearing rumors about the Colts potentially trading up for Brock Bowers. You know, I just heard something recently about the Chicago Bears. 
they have one and nine. What if they tried to move up so they can get Marvin Harrison? Obviously, they have two good wide receivers, but just the talk, the speculations, because the closer you get to draft, like those actual suggestions, those this is what I'm hearing, those actually become more true. All that stuff two months ago and six weeks ago and things like that. You can say anything. Now I think we're getting closer to seeing the moves that are going to be made. Well, I think the Bears, you know, I, I saw that too, Braylon. I yeah. think the Bears, if you're the Bears and you saw what Houston did last year to get their quarterback, C.J. Stroud, and then to immediately trade to get that number three pick Will Anderson, for Will Anderson yeah. Jr., and then you saw the dividends that that paid by doing that, Houston wins the division, home playoff game, after three straight years of winning Three games or less. Yeah, won the offseason so far. Right? You have a first-year head coach, a first-year quarterback. Um, that was remarkable. Maybe that is a, a, a bit of a blueprint for teams to get good quickly. You just grab two elite prospects. Yeah. Now, you can't miss on them, right? You can't miss on them. True. Houston did not miss on Will Anderson Jr. or C.J. Stroud, or their head coach, by the way. Throw that into the mix. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and if you're the Bears, I'm sure that's something you're you're throwing around. The yeah, Bears are the Bears are getting close, man. They already have a pretty good roster. I mean, we talked about their defense last year, and they yeah. had to get their offense better. And they've already tried to they've addressed it. They picked themselves a running back, and they pick themselves up uh, and Keenan Allen, a wide receiver. They yeah. they're ready to compete. The only thing they're missing is a quarterback. So now you're going to get yeah, Caleb, Caleb Williams, and you got to start over again, basically. I don't know about starting over, man. I'm telling you, I think Caleb Williams is going to be a lot better than people give him credit for. I think you mix him with those elite players on offense. I think that will help him out tremendously. But uh, they're about an elite rusher away from being, like, a problem. And it's going to be a really interesting year for the Lions this year. Look, love the Lions. We know they're the number one in the division. But Minnesota is going to be much better than people think, and they give them credit for it. And Chicago, it seems like they're moving in that way. And who knows what they're going to do at the top of the draft to maybe help that situation out. And obviously Green Bay, we know what they're sitting at uh, after last season. So this is going to be a fun division to watch. NFC North was trash a couple of years ago, and now it's back in a major way. We talked about it yesterday. Uh, because you picked 29th, people are gassed by the time you pick 29th. <laughs> last year in Kansas City, uh, the bar we were at, was 90% empty at that point. Yeah. And the people in Kansas City watching their team pick at 31 were like, okay. And they picked some guy uh, from, I forgot the name of the guy. We mentioned him yesterday. Not a huge name, but, you know, you, you hear a couple of claps. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's great. That's great. It could come to pick 29. It's 11 o'clock at night down in Detroit. And Brad Holmes could say, all right, let's swap this damn pick now. So you're there all night waiting for your pick, and then he swaps it at eleven o'clock at night. Mm. So it's it's gonna be it's gonna be something, man, uh, to watch. It really is. It's like you said, Rye. The first ten picks, the first six picks are gonna be really exciting to watch. Felix and Duque Azume. There you go. Let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> That's the Kansas right, City Right, round Chiefs. one, pick thirty-one. <laughs> there you go. I mean, if the Lions get a player like Kool-Aid McKinstry, I yeah. think, you know, if they get a player that they'll know, that fans will know, I think you'll get a big pop. I mean, and I think Detroit Lions fans are, um, you know, they're pretty excited to begin with. Yeah. Um, but today. I just think Detroit fans are excited because of how good and how well Brad Holmes has done in the draft. I think that's one reason why you're very excited for that. Right. He's done so well. So you're like, yeah, I don't care who he drafts. I'm just excited because I know that that pick. It's going to be a pick that you vetted, that the Lions have definitely paid attention to. They've scouted, they've vetted, and it's going to be one that it's going to increase the team right away. Uh, Tigers, by the way, have uh, tied it up in the ninth inning. They were losing 3-1. to one. They have tied it at three Gio in the Urshela. ninth. Gio Urshela. Gio Urshela. Winner at the third. Uh, again, it's a, it's a veteran guy. We could talk about it coming uh, when the game's over. We'll talk yeah. about it. But, again, it's a veteran bat, Gio Urshela that uh, is doing some of these young kids, not so much, uh, but either way. Um, uh, local, just, what? I was going to say Torkelson was up, and he's just standing there, and the guy pitches, on, hit. pitches him inside. He got and hit. He's got the armor on. Right. And he just he stuck goes, it out there a little bit. <laughs> he just sticks it out. I mean. Smart baseball. Yeah, I know, but that, that's the Barry Bonds. That, you know, remember Barry Bonds right. had the whole things on? That's it, To me, that's, that's not a good thing. It's not a cool thing to do, but it. That's today's game. Mm. That's today's game. 
Somebody will get thrown at for that. <laughs> back, <laughs> back in the day, right. somebody's getting thrown at. Recalled in Cincinnati, Tommy. What was that? Remember when Pete Alonzo was at bat in Cincinnati and he stuck his arm out and they said, nope, it's, it, we're not going to go back to the batter's box. Yeah, but this guy, he got away with it. Torkelson got away with it. So 3-3. Three, three. Feel uh, bad for him. Yeah, 3-3. Three, three. Uh, we'll talk about it when the game goes final, if it goes final. Um, but just getting back to the Lions here for a second, you know, I think because of Brad Holmes' success in the NFL draft, too, that has taken a lot of the big opinions about what they should do yeah. out of the mix as well. Like, I, I don't care who you are. You are not going to pick a better player than Brad Holmes is going to pick. That has not always been the case here. Right? We, as Lions fans, we as NFL fans, have long thought that we could pick better players than our general manager would Probably pick true. on draft night. Probably true. Probably true <laughs> over the last 60 years. Yeah. That is not the case anymore. In fact, I think Brad Holmes, what he's done in the last three years, is as successful a run top to bottom than any three-year draft you could possibly think of. And because of that, you really, your big opinion yeah. is moot. It's a moot point. It doesn't matter what your big opinion is because this guy's going to probably pick some stud <laughs> that you don't even know his name. Yeah. <laughs> and if you do know his name, it's fine. Uh, he's going to be a great player. Yeah, 100%. I mean, you look at the Pittsburgh Steelers and how they built that team in three drafts. You got... Uh, mean Joe Green, Terry draft, Bradshaw, Jack Hammond, 100%. And then you look at how the uh, Cowboys That's one draft. draft. I'm talking about three-year <coughs> draft, you know, top to bottom. Yep. Well, they, well, they didn't get Franco Harris that year. Mm -hmm. Franco came two years later, so kind of. Okay, just, fair enough. Yeah, San Francisco, how they drafted Bill oh, yeah. Walsh, 100%. But, like, what I'm naming are. Did you kill Bill Walsh? <laughs> <laughs> but what I'm naming, Ryan, if you notice, these are teams that won championships. You're talking about two different dynasties, won four championships. That's what it seems like. Brad Holmes is building. Now, they got even the first one. But they got to the NFC Championship last year, and they were knocking at the door with seven minutes left. So if he keeps this up, you could be looking at something special. Just so great that um, you don't almost have to worry about it. You just know you're in good hands. Local prospects up today. Um, uh, Matt Broder, you could listen to him and watch him on the Wake Up Woodward show, put out some of the names of some local prospects uh, that were in Allen Park today. Uh, some Michigan guys, Roman Wilson, Mike Sandra still. Stop. Draft him. Well, I mean, God, he's a perfect Dan Campbell guy, isn't Draft he? Draft him. Isn't he the perfect Dan Campbell guy? Yes, he is. Uh, Mike Sandra still, it just feels like, okay, let me ask you. Kool-Aid McKinstry or Mike Sandra still? Sandra still. Yeah. Now ask me Sandra still or Cooper DeGene. Ooh. San Rastill or Cooper DeGene? Cooper DeGene. <laughs> Great white hype. That's who I want. But I'll take Mikey right there, 1-1-A. One, one I went back and watched some highlights of Cooper DeGene, man. Uh, he, he, can play, he can play. Dude, did you see him Coop, play basketball? Like, Coop, like Cooper DeGene, he can school. play. He's nice. He was jamming in high school. I mean, some of the, it, like, the, just one step rise and slam dunk. I love that kid. That's a Dan Campbell, Brad Holmes guy. And he'd be the third Iowa Hawkeye on the team. Jack Campbell, Sam Laporta, so he knows him well. Yeah. Look, I've Tell watched me those some guys film. Aren't putting a good word in for him. The guy can play. The guy's yeah. got some skills. I just think with Mike Sanders still, though, man, I just think you're getting a player that he can rise to the occasion of what you need him for. Do you need him to go in as the two DB? Do you need him as the one? Do you need him as nickel? Do you need whatever you need him to do? Do you need him to go play as a wide receiver? Because that's where he started yeah. at Michigan. I just love how he played the game, and a lot of the games that they won. The Ohio State games, the Washington games. He's making plays in crucial moments. He's a game. Um, he's a game changer. Yeah, Amazing very good. Don't changer. forget the new kickoff rule. I mean, you're going to put a guy back there that can return <laughs> kicks at Cooper DeGene or Cooper DeJean. <laughs> I wish I knew how to say his name. <laughs> you think I would by this point? Cool. Uh, that kid can, can return kicks as well. Oh. Okay. Braylon, Braylon's sitting here. Tigers take the lead. Uh, <laughs> Tigers say, Braylon's sitting here watching, giving you the play-by-play -play of the Tigers game over here. So if you're watching on delay, we apologize. You don't need Dickerson. <laughs> you don't need Dickerson. We'll got Braylon Edwards. Oh. Great. <laughs> oh. Hey. Oh. Uh. <laughs> My bad. Uh, it's My so bad. great. Ryan said the Tigers were that good. I said, they're going to win this game, man. <laughs>
<laughs> oh, hey. All right, so we'll take a break. We'll come right back. Uh, but first, a message from... Premier, Premier Pet. Pet Supply. That's me, man. It's the best pet store, hands down, in Michigan. PremierPetSupply.com. Check them out. Family-owned and operator for over 30 years. 13 Metro Detroit locations. And, of course, 60 brands of food at the lowest prices available. And they've got curbside delivery and nutritionists on call to answer your every question. Ryan's got a new pooch at home. Lexi, my Jeter, he loves Premier Pet Supply. So will your pet. Check them out. PremierPetSupply.com. Congratulations to the real coach of the year, Motor City Dan Campbell. Just put your head down and go to work. It's about to be fun, man. It's about to be fun. Woodward Sports. To any Lady Jane's haircuts for men and claim your throne for a king's treatment from one of our talented stylists. Open seven days a week. Walk in anytime. Just get to a Lady Jane's today and receive a precision haircut, scalp massage, hot lather neck shave, and a hot towel treatment. A haircut should not be a chore. It should be an experience. And that's exactly what Lady Jane's has to offer. Open seven days a week. Walk-ins are always welcome. There's always a location near you. Lady Jane's haircuts for men. It's wicked awesome. And with the first pick in the 2024 media draft, Detroit selects Woodward Sports. Thank you for making us the number one digital network in Detroit. Where's the most convenient place to get that big fitness energy? It's Planet Fitness. Join today for just $1 down, $10 a month. With over 2,400 locations and equipment for every workout, you can get in, get energized, and get going. And with free fitness training and most clubs open 24 hours, everyone belongs in the judgment-free zone. So join today for $1 down, $10 a month, no commitment, cancel any time. A ton of fun, a ton of sports, and a ton of man meat. Welcome to the Woodward Heavyweights, live daily 5 to 7 p.m. on Woodward Sports. <laughs> yep. And pizza, while watching your favorite team play, let me tell you, it's nothing. Let me tell you about Soroki's Crispy Chicken and Pizza. Their food is amazing and their locations are popping up all over the place. And now, the Nashville Hot is back. Nashville Hot Pizza, Nashville Hot Chicken Sandwich, the Nashville Hot Wings, and the Nashville Hot Fries. Simply put, Nashville is on fire at Soroki's. Pull up. Check out their full menu also at Soroki's.com. S-A-R-O-K-I-S.com. All right, guys, welcome back. Woodward Sports so Network. Okay. We're going to go around the NFL with the great Tom Mazaway, a.k.a. Right. Maz. Here we go, buddy. <laughs> Let's go with the cards. Uh, we talked about it a little bit a couple of minutes ago, actually. Cardinals uh, in the news. Getting to, they're sitting at number four. Word on the street is, oh, they're just going to grab uh, the best wide receiver, whoever they're going to take. Is it going to be? You don't know who the hell are they going to take. But now they might. They want three number one picks. To move down from the fourth pick in the draft. Three number ones. Okay, that's not going to happen. But I'll tell you what would happen is you get a one this year. Two ones and a two. You get a one this year uh, and uh, maybe a three or a one next year. You just make sure you get two ones yeah, and a two or two ones and two twos. Kind of like the Lions did. Okay, yeah. Kind of like the Lions did. Name me the last wide receiver that was drafted in the first round that ever put a team over the top. Odell Beckham was cold, but they still sucked. Mm. Uh, and look, I'm you sure could tell all- you could tell me Jamar Chase, but Jamar Chase doesn't happen without Joe Burrow. You know, I'm not sure there's the Joe Burrow in Arizona. Randy Moss. Yeah, they know. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, Randy Moss was. They didn't uh, win. They didn't win it. They went to the NFC Championship. Yeah. So did the Lions. <laughs> now, Last year. Yeah, but they didn't draft the wide receiver. Right. It took them over the right. top. To I, what you yeah. Said. The Cards need wa- a lot of players. Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm saying, man. Yeah. I just. And, and for New England as well. You know, for, for, for New England as well, I mean, you could really set yourself up here if, if you just punt just punt this year because you know Merrill Hodge you see what Merrill Hodge said yeah talked about it yesterday uh he talked about it yesterday Drake whoever takes Drake May is just setting themselves up to get fired he's a coach killer he's a a, coach killer yep he's a coach um so I mean you have an opportunity for your franchise to legitimately just start filling every 
yeah. excuse me, every major hole that you have on your team by tr- making one trade? Yes. Or do you want to take a quarterback that might get you fired? There's no sure thing in this draft. Yeah, no, definitely not a sure thing. I mean, you know, Marvin Harrison's a damn good receiver. He's damn as good. close to the sure as you could get. 100%. But at the same time, when you're bad like that, you want to get more picks so you can get more players like the Lions, like, just like you call it, like the Lions. Get more players to help your team get better, faster, more positive, just like the Houston Texans did uh, last year. You need players. That's what the Cardinals need. And just to draft the guy of four, it's not going to cut it. Who does like Kyler Murray want them to take? He wants them to take Marvin Harrison. Is he even still he's got like no, it there? He's got nobody to throw to. Yeah, no, I, I understand. If or, do you, or do you just get rid of Kyler Murray somehow and draft a quarterback? Or well, you bought that's what in? That's Cannonbaum you, said. Yeah. Have, you, have you bought in to Kyler Murray? Well, you better figure that part out, too, because Jonathan Gannon said he's our guy. Right. But who, what does that mean? If what team is more likely and should trade out? Is it New England at three or Arizona at four? New England should. Yeah, they they should. The I most. don't think there's any question. It's New England. Yeah, they should absolutely trade out of that pick because even if you get, uh, even if Drake May or JJ are great, they're they're not going to be great for your franchise. They're probably going to be so beaten up and ruined. If they're great, they're going to be great somewhere else because they will be so done with your team that um, by the time New England gets good, you're not even going to have uh, – you're going to have to make a change at quarterback because the co- GM's going to get fired, the coach yeah. is going to get fired, and then it's just yeah. going to be another cycle. Speaking of New England, look who I was with when I was down oh, in North man. Carolina. It was horrible talk. Matthew Judon, speaking of the Patriots. Oh, Matthew Judon. Detroit song. He said they're going to be much better next year. He said so. He said, look out. I said, y'all don't have an offense, Matt. Like, <laughs> who's throwing the ball? So who's catching the ball? Who's running the ball? He said, man, trust me, we're going to be better. So, well, That's good. I, I'm not going to trust him, but right. I love him. <laughs> they have a very so, good defense. Yeah. And he's a part of it. He's one of the reasons why I agree with that. But, they might be closer than we ever think they are. Now, oh, did Wash- is oh, Washington have Juju settled Smith's on system. anybody yet? Washington has not settled yeah. anyone yet. Remember that two weeks ago was for sure it's going to be J.J. McCarthy, mm. and then Drake May's name popped up. They don't. We don't know what Washington's yeah. doing. They're a wild card. Mm. New ownership, new everything. They're a, they're a wild card, man. They're a wild card because the pick's a wild card pick too. Like if we really break that pick down, they're sitting there at two. After Caleb Williams, you got Drake May who has all these yards, all these stats, but also you see what North Carolina quarterbacks have done in the NFL. You've seen what he did in college. Didn't necessarily win at the highest level. You're really grasping the straws. Then you get Jaden Daniels, won the Heisman last year. He can run the ball. He can pass the ball. But at the same time, is he your guy? Is he not? Is he just one year with LSU? Is he really skilled like that? Do you really believe he's your quarterback? Then here comes J.J. McCarthy. Do you believe he has enough experience? Is he going to be able to lead a team in the NFL, much like he didn't have to do at Michigan? Is he ready for that type of situation? So every pick that you make at two and three, you're really just breaking down, and you're starting to look, ah, ah, ah. Whoever has the least amount of cons is the guy you got to draft. That's right. Yeah. Hey, there's word on the street again, NFL street, that the Colts are desperate to move up from number 15 to get their hands on Brock Bowers, a tight end from Georgia. Chris Ballard, who's been their general manager, has done a nice job, uh, has never traded up. So will they trade up from 15? How far do you have to go up to get Brock Bowers? I think he's a top 10 guy. I, I think that, that – Harbaugh should take him or Alt. Might have been a number one pick in the draft if he was able to come out after his freshman or sophomore uh, year. You're not lying. You know what I mean? Now he gets injured. I don't. I don't trade up for an injured player. But he played after his injury. I understand, but he didn't play all that great. He was. He, you know, I'm just. Yeah. I'm, he just he did play. God bless him. I think he wanted to prove that he could play, but he wasn't the Brock Bowers that we knew him to be. Now that doesn't mean that he's. Yeah not going to be that guy next year or anything like that. I'm just not trading up for an injured player. He's a I mean, that's what Brad Holmes did with J-Mo. Yeah. And it's not working so far. And it's, it's not working so far. Brock Bowers is elite, man. Like, I would take a chance. But how far up am I moving to get Brock Bowers? 15 to 
four, maybe fifteen mm. to five. Nah, not for Brock Bowers. I love Brock Bowers. I think he's great. He can run. He, he runs great routes. He can run routes on safeties. He can run routes on linebackers. He's a very versatile offensive player. But moving up that many picks, what am I giving up to get uh, Brock Bowers? Also, you're a team that's on the cusp. Made the playoffs this year with Shane Steichen. You're getting your quarterback and Anthony Richardson back this season. Once again, trying to get teams better. You need players. I'm not moving up. The the the, the draft capital that it would take to move draft up cap. from 15 to five. You know, that's heavy. It is a little bit too heavy for my blood. I'll tell you for for an injured player. And Ballard has not right. done it. No. So who knows what they But say. Brock Bowers is an intriguing player because, you know, the Chargers could use him at five. The Jets could use him at 10, obviously. You know, I, I, I don't think he gets past 10. If he gets outside of the top 10, and you're talking about moving up from 15 to 11, but you probably don't even have to do that because then you've got Denver sitting there and needing a quarterback. You know what I mean? Gotcha, like yeah. Things like this. So um, it'll that's one player that I'm definitely intrigued by. Cooper DeJean had his pro day uh, yesterday, so we'll put up his numbers for you so you can actually see how he ran. And uh, this kid is the real deal, man. And uh, he wanted to prove he wasn't injured. And hey, I think he did just that. 4-4-5 four, four, on the 40. Long jump was great. Uh, his, uh, what do you call the vertical? That was good. Yeah, the vertical lead. Uh, mm-hmm. 38.3, I think it was 38.5. Boy got hops and he can run. Here's a, oh, here we is. go. It's 202, he's six foot, so he's, uh, he's got size. Hands. Braylon, what would you do if you saw a white defensive back back there? Lick my chops. <laughs> 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 I mean, like, I, so, I mean, we used to, all the intrigue is because there are no white corners in the NFL. It's right? not why I like him. I know it, it's not why you like him, right. but it's why it's why he gets so much yeah. injury. I mean, he would be the first white cornerback Jason since Jason Seahorn in, what, 99? Yeah. Yep. Something like that. Funniest story. So we played uh, Ohio State. Ohio State had Dustin Fox. Dustin Fox was their DB, starting DB for two years. He started my junior year. And he started, no, he started my, he was a nickelback my junior year. He started senior year. I remember the first time I came in the game, and he was in the game, and they put him on me. I was like, man, right. get this dude out of here. Touchdown. I touched down in my senior year, too. But he could play. It just, but that's, you just don't see it. So when you don't see it, you instantly. Well, like, that's what I'm saying. I, I'm no, not saying he's not, not a great, dude. he can't yeah. be a great player. He's not a great player. He is. Yeah. But. Part of the story, too, is that there's been this 25-year gap in between white defensive backs, too, in the NFL. Yeah. That is part of the story and part of the added layer of intrigue that comes along with this player. Slower. Like, this yeah, is a guy that ran, ran down when he was at a pile of players on his own goal line, and he ran down a guy Samaj Morgan, 90 yards right? to catch a guy. That's a, you can call him a tryhard. Don that's, what, that's what white athletes are called. They're called tryhards that do that. <laughs> but you know what? That nah, kid. I never heard of that. That <laughs> kid fits on the Lions. That kid fits in this, on this team with these general manager and this coach. First I am all, telling you. It's a new day and age, and it's a new day in the way you train kids, the way you train players. Like white kids, that stigma is gone. There is some. A lot of white boys can run. A lot of white boys can jump. In fact, last night in that Purdue game, the guy that caught the tip oh dog. Oh, my God. Where the hell did he come right. from? One hand jam. Last time I checked, my eyes were, he was white. So yep. it's definitely about, about that. He's got the skill. He's got the mm-hmm. talent. He's got the measurables, too. But he also has that that will. I think that's what Mavs that's love. That's the key. Take a shot. Right. We've been <laughs> successful so far with the Iowa guys. Bring another Big Ten guy in there. <laughs> I, I like it. And I like Mikey Sandra still. Like I said, working out for the Lions today and uh, – who knows what he's going to – he's going to impress these guys. Let's face it. You say J.J. McCarthy interviews well. Right. Wait till they talk to this kid. Yeah. Well, and, and I think I think that was part of why NFL scouts and general managers were saying at the NFL Combine, if you remember, that the Michigan players were two years yep. ahead of everybody else. Yeah. All of them. Just the system that they ran – how their bodies uh, were trained. Wow. That is a part of it. Um, ben, ben, ben Herbert. Ben Herbert. The mental aspect they had for the game was different. The, 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 the style of play was different. Two years ahead. Yeah. You can't recreate that stuff. 100%. When you look at Jim Harbaugh, Jim Harbaugh, one, is, is addicted to football. 
He's addicted to football, the game, players, every aspect about football. So when you play for him, he's very disciplined. You're going to have to be on time. You're going to have to know what you're talking about. You get randomly called out to make sure you know the players and things of that nature. Like, he runs it professional style. Mm -hmm. Like, this is a business. This is a business. You come here, you're employed by the University of Michigan, and we're going to treat it as such. And in doing so, man, he's instilled a lot of great values in these men and also made them love the game of football, too. Like, I've talked to somebody, Mike Barrett, who's actually on that list. Uh, I talked to him a couple times. Just their insight for the game, just their knowledge, the way they look at it, the way they approach it. They approach it the regular way, the pro, excuse me, the professional way. I think a lot of schools, they let kids grow up. They let them have fun. Coaches are a little more laid back. Player coaches, especially down at SEC. Nah. This ain't for play up here in Michigan, man. We're going to teach you how to be a man. We're going to teach you how to love the game of football. I think that's what the GMs and the presidents and the owners are seeing when they're interviewing these Michigan kids. And you see all these guys men. climbing up the draft boards, you know, whether it's J.J. McCarthy, Mike Sanristil, uh, Blake Jun Corum. Junior Colston, Blake Corum. Yeah. All of these guys continue to creep up. The more tape you watch, yep. the more times you interview them, the more times you do visits with them, you do dinner with them. You do a chalkboard session with them. They continue to impress. It is something that I think that's part of like, the, and, and Sharon Moore, obviously, Sharon Moore is not going to be Jim Harbaugh. It's impossible. Yeah. You've, like, nobody is. N yes, nobody is. But could he be that type of coach eventually? Yes. He's never been a head coach before. You got to give him a chance to do that. I understand that. But what I'm saying is, um, you know, this coach was so elite when he was at Michigan and the level of player that you, you, you take player A and you, you make that person over four years, it's just really an incredible thing to see. And this NFL draft is so intriguing. Yeah. Not only is it in Detroit, but you've got all these Michigan guys involved yeah. in it. That it, 18 to be exact. Absolutely. That is going to be a fun part for uh, Detroiters and, and local people here, local football fans here to be involved in is to see those, those that local talent on the on the stage. Quick question. Let's stick with Jim Harbaugh for a second. Sure. How fast does he win in the NFL, in your, in, in your estimation? Does he win year one? Yes. Like, get to the playoffs, and then, and then does he get to the Super Bowl within the five years? I don't think he wins in year one. I think he gets to the playoffs. playoffs this year. Playoffs? Have you seen his offense? Yeah. It's not very good. <laughs> his <laughs> offense is not very good. Uh -huh. Throw an offensive lineman into the mix, maybe a tight end and a running back. You can get good quickly in the NFL. Well, we all know last year they were a decent team, but Brandon Staley did not make the right moves. Disbanded, they've got, yeah. They've got the right coach now, but here's a guy that's jettisoned a, a, a few of his players. Austin Eckler, or Eckler as Braylon likes to call him. <laughs> Keenan Allen. There's a yeah. few other guys that aren't here anymore. But he did keep some of his nucleus. He kept some of his defensive guys. Yeah, Khalil Mack still yeah. there. Khalil Joey Mack, Bolson they all signed. Bolson's still there. Derwin James. Still there. Derwin James. Yeah, so yeah. maybe they could make a playoff run. That's a tough division, man. I'm just not going to bet. a very tough division. I'm just not going to bet against him, and this is why. Everywhere he's gone, he's won right away. Mm -hmm. He's won right away. You look at San Diego. You look at Stanford. His first year at Stanford, they beat USC. I was there his first year in San Francisco. Hell, we were in NFC Championship. You know, his first year he got to Michigan. No, they didn't beat Ohio State, but guess what? Uh, he was 10-3. and three. Mm. He found 10 wins on a team that wasn't very good, according to the uh, preseason hype. So he just knows how to win right away, and I think he comes with each place he's gone and left, he's taking something with him. He's taking something with him, man. He wouldn't have took this job if he didn't think he could have success right away. Speaking of winning, the Tigers have won. Hey, there we go. They score four in the ninth and beat the Pittsburgh Pirates five to three. Look at that. Uh, they are now seven and four yeah, on yeah. the year. How about that? Seven and four. So they start off six and one, lose three in a row, and now they are on a one game winning streak. How about that? But they stopped the bleeding in Pittsburgh. They needed to stop the bleeding here, too, because look, um, these young players, talking about Riley Green, Spencer Torkelson, Kerry Carpenter, Colt Keith. Uh, Austin uh, Meadows, or par excuse me, Parker, Parker Meadows. Meadows yeah. um, they are very young. Um, and, uh, man, when you're relying on a lot of young bats, yeah. five of them in yeah. your lineup, mo mostly on a daily basis, that is a danger, man. That's why, that's why, you know, I think a lot of people wanted to sign, you know, uh, a veteran bat, Matt Chapman, Martinez. J.D. Martinez, yeah. Matt Chapman come to mind. Yeah. You know, Mark Canna. 
You know, uh, Gio Urshela with the big yep. hit today in the night. That was a great sign. Javier Baez. Yeah. I just, he's better. He's looked better. He's 0 for 3 with a K today. But he's looked better. Uh, last night he was up in a big spot with the bases loaded and gets mowed down. Well, Chapman overpowered. I understand that, but but Baez is getting paid too. I get it. You know. Uh, By the way, tomorrow's a day off, and boy, did they need it. Yeah. Yeah. Because the rain outs, you know, you need those things. What happened with the Mets? You know, set them back mm. two rain days, and you got to play all. You got to play those double headers. Came home for opening day mm -hmm. and play straight through the day, including a travel day to Pittsburgh. Not a long trip, but still a trip. Yeah. So now they come home, take a day off, and the Twins come in on Thursday. Okay. Where, I like it for where, you. where are you, Maz? You were at opening day. No, you were not. Uh, you, no. Sorry, uh, you were in, in Florida. Kentucky. You were in Kentucky. Um, I, I can't keep. Uh, where in the world is Tom Maz away? <laughs> he's he's, he's can't, on the go. Can't keep it all I was straight. In Florida, Florida, Kentucky, New and Jersey. Cincinnati this weekend. This where, week, last week. What is the pulse? Where are the people on the Detroit Tigers? Where are all the people? Um, because I, 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 I sit here. And I, I think eighty-eight wins, eighty-six wins might win this division. Yeah, I agree. Eighty-six. I mean, eighty-eight for the win. 88 for, for like if you just continue to do what you're doing now and I'm saying just hang around yeah. just don't have any of these nine game losing streaks you're gonna be okay it's gonna be a fun summer around here if you can just if you win one lose one win one lose one win, fine 500 maybe you go on a couple of three four game winning streaks maybe you go on a couple of two three game losing streaks but but when you get into five six game losing streaks, that's when you really set yourself back. When they lost to the A's, and I went over the the record against the A's, four and twenty one at Comerica Park mm. against the A's, that's unheard what? of. Four and twenty one against the A's. Yes, at Comerica. A's stink at Comerica. Not to the Tigers. <laughs> they they're Tiger killers. Isn't that something? That was some number. They won two mm. out of three, and let's face it, they don't even have a home. They're playing in front of like 3,000 right. people. They're going to Sacramento, and then they're going to Vegas. It's, it's sad, man, the, what baseball let that happen. That the real K. Collins 77 says more like 95 wins to win the Central? Well, Cleveland's playing good baseball. Cleveland's 8-2 and two, but just lost their, their ace. Shane Bieber yep. is out for the season. He is. Tommy man. John, sir. I know. He's on my team. All, Ken says oh, offense man. is pathetic. And I do think the offense is pathetic. Oh, Keith, two hits yesterday. Yeah, very good. You know, but these you got to allow these young players, Colt Keith specifically, to have some ups and downs this year. Of Not course. a lot of rookies that are gonna, you know, other than of course the guy we passed that went to Texas, Langford. Oh my god! <laughs> you know, um, twice. Yeah, Mass. Do they win the division this year? Or is this Cleveland? You're the baseball. No, guy. I, I, th I think the Tigers have an excellent chance to win this year. Mm -hmm. It'll come between. It's going to be a, th a three horse race, if you ask me. Since he Minnesota, I mean uh, Cleveland, Cleveland, Minnesota, and Detroit. Yeah. We got to get to a game this year. Oh, I'm down. Name it. I'm trying to go. Yeah. Just name it. I'll oh, go man. It. Name it. I love now going I got two more park. weeks of bowling that I'm free. Oh, how's bowling going? We've had a bad streak the last really? month. <laughs> I haven't We're heard still you. in it. We're fifth. Did you miss last week? You missed? No, no. I, I went, and then the next day I left. Okay. I got home from Florida on Thursday. Gotcha, gotcha. Bowled, and then left for Kentucky on Friday. <laughs> You're getting that bowling in. Got to get bowling so in. So you guys are no longer one point back? We're uh, eight back. Ooh. Oh, man, you're done. No, we got to win this week. <laughs> Cook. We got to win this week. If we sweep this week, we got a shot. Yeah. Sweet. Um, will you tell me about your trip to Kentucky with Pete? Oh, no. Will sure. you guys talk about this? Yeah, I could do a little bit. Yeah, tell me about it. You got pictures, too, I saw. Yeah, Pete put yeah, some do. pictures up yesterday. We had a great time. It was uh, my man Tim Kane and Mike Allway. Okay. Uh, Pete and myself. We wanted to go see the there great racetrack, Keeneland. In, in Lexington, in Kentucky. It's one of the great tracks of the world, not only of the United States, but of the world. They run basically five weeks a year, six weeks a year. That's it. So we got to go on, uh, we missed opening day, which was Friday. So we were there Saturday, and we got to see the Bluegrass Stakes, which is a prep race for the Kentucky Derby. Sierra Leone won the race. By the way, mm. Ken Cal gave us a shout out. On our drive down. Stop it. Friday, yeah. he knew we were going, and he gave us a shout-out in the second period of the Red Wings. What did he say? Hey, let's uh, send it out. Uh, uh, shout-out to the, we call ourselves the Let It Ride Gang. Uh -huh. He said, shout-out to the Let It Ride Gang. Maz, Pete, Mike, and and uh, and Timmy on their way to Keeneland. And Ken's like, 
You got to bet Sierra Leone to win. Sierra Leone won. Did you bet? Of course. We okay. didn't bet him, of course. Uh. <laughs> Pete, how, Pete, how'd you do? You bet Sierra Leone? No. I survived uh, hanging out with Maz uh, for for a weekend. No, we had a fun time. Seriously, I mean, it, to go to a cathedral of horse racing, yeah. being Who's you know Keelan, it, the weather was gorgeous. The women were even better looking, and ah. the the it did. I, I lost money, but it didn't matter. I I it, you know combined everything it, with my friends, hanging out with the nice weather, gambling. I didn't care. I had a freaking okay. blast, boys. And then to go to Great American Ballpark on Sunday. Here's that a great was question for you, Maz. How many times did Peter annoy you in the car? Right? <laughs> he had four guys in the car. <laughs> what? How many the times? Three, the, the three of us had earplugs in. Wait, you had time, four guys in one car? Ooh, yeah, four tough. hours in a truck. Mike oh had a truck, which was great. Okay. okay. Big back seat, big front seat. It was great. Thanks to Mike. Was there Hall, any uh, belching or any uh, there was belching. flatulence? There was, there was plenty yeah. of belching. <laughs> I think I think Maz needs to go back to that sleep study. I'll tell you that the guy was snoring. Any flatulence? Like he was snoring. Uh, yeah, there was, there was flatulence. Oh. Maz is in a snore. I think Maz he needs like a CPAP snore. machine, dude. I'm a snorer. No CPAP for me. I go all out, man. <laughs> I'm all out. I needed a CPAP. Get your own room next time. <laughs> oh man, I'd have hated to see that bathroom. Here's some pictures of uh, Great American Ballpark. It was absolutely beautiful. We didn't blow it up. This is your cathedral, isn't it, Maz? Look at it. Uh, yeah. Great American Ballpark. I love Cincinnati's yeah. park. It's yeah. beautiful. First time I was there, and I fell in love with it. The concourse is like a mall. It really, it's wider than Comerica. It's brighter. Okay. It, it's really, it's on the water. You see the bridges of Cincinnati. Very true. It's, it's a great backdrop. And I'll tell you, the fans are great. I like the in-game uh, entertainment. Uh, the announcer was old school, like Michigan's announcer. Mm. And when the uh, Mets came up, he would be like, batting second, number two, Francisco Lindor. <laughs> you know, and, then, and then we we got to see a number 44 on the Reds. Oh, yeah. Ellie De De Cruz. De yeah. Cruz. He Inside stole, the park. stole three bases when we were there. Yesterday, two home runs, one from each side of the plate. And an inside the park home run. Where's the Tigers? Ellie Dela Dela Cruz. Dela How, Cruz. Exactly. I mean, we, you and I talked about him a lot last yes. year. You, you show, you put me on he to him. Some, fell in love. He is something. Where does he rate in terms of these new players? Like, is he a top ten top, player? Is top he a top five, five player? Top He's top five. five. Yeah. I thought top so, five. but I heard some some. Hey, where's some, number forty four? Like Reggie. One hundred percent. He's cold. cold. He's, he's fantastic. Yeah. The Reds are the Reds are a fun team to root for, guys. Yeah, absolutely. How your Dodgers doing, man? How Dodgers? Shohei's kicking butt. Hey, can we can we do a a quick uh, baseball topic? I would love the, the, to. Yeah. Over the weekend, there was so much vitriol for uh, yeah. baseball as a sport. Did you hear what the uh, um, the pitchers? No, no. Um, the Mets announcer. Oh yeah. Said, oh my God! Kill Angels base, announcer. Angels was announcer. Us. Yes. Oh wow. Angels announcer. I don't know if we can get that or not. I'd like. I don't know. Would I'll that, see would, if I could find. Would it. that put us down on YouTube if we? No, that? I think we could find that. Okay, we'll try to get that for you. We'll take a break, but first, a message from us. Who? Us here. At Woodward Merch. Sports. Oh, good. There you go, guys. Shop.woodwardsports.com. You can check out the latest gear, and we do have. The new political style T-shirt in house right now. It's selling like hotcakes. So you better get it before it go it's gone. Brad Holmes, Dan Campbell. That's a ticket you'll vote for any election. Also check out that let's you know what go Red Wings hoodie. Also you got you know become a Brad Holmes guy. You can grab that T-shirt there. Don't forget. We have Merchandise Giveaway Monday going on right now. Obviously, it is Tuesday, but next Monday we'll do some more merch giveaway. Head to shop.woodwardsports.com and get those hoodies, tees, and hats that are guaranteed to turn heads. We'll be right back. And with the first pick in the 2024 media draft, Detroit selects Woodward Sports. Thank you for making us the number one digital network in Detroit. At work and at home. We're there with smarter security solutions. Featuring complete automation with customized alerts and more. For over 90 years, we've been the company that's been counted on to protect what matters most, all with personalized service and care. Right now, for a limited time, receive a free video device plus free installation with a new home system. Guardian Alarm, we protect Michigan. Congratulations to the real coach of the year, Motor City Dan Campbell. Just put your head down and go to work. It's about to be fun, man. It's about to be fun. Woodward Sports. 
Where's the most convenient place to get that big fitness energy? It's Planet Fitness. Join today for just $1 down, $10 a month. With over 2,400 locations and equipment for every workout, you can get in, get energized, and get going. And with free fitness training and most clubs open 24 hours, everyone belongs in the judgment-free zone. So join today for $1 down, $10 a month, no commitment, cancel any time. Come to any Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men and claim your throne for a king's treatment from one of our talented stylists. Open seven days a week, walk in anytime. Just get to a Lady Jane's today and receive a precision haircut, scalp massage, hot lather neck shave, and a hot towel treatment. A haircut should not be a chore, it should be an experience. And that's exactly what Lady Jane's has to offer. Open seven days a week, walk-ins are always welcome. There's always a location near you. Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men, it's wicked awesome. Come to any Lady Jane's haircuts for men. Is that an octopus in your pants, or are you just happy to see me? <laughs> see what I did there? Go Red Wings from Octopi Experts Woodward Sports. You, you smell that? That's Brad Holmes cooking. The off-season smells good. Woodward Sports. And with the first pick in the 2024 media draft, Detroit selects Woodward Sports. Thank you for making us the number one digital network in Detroit. Hey, gang, let me tell you about Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men. Awesome is when a guy can be a guy and get an amazing haircut. That's Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men. Stop in, sit back, relax. Let one of Lady Jane's talented stylists make you look and feel great. Walk in anytime, seven days a week. Lady Jane's, it's wicked awesome. When it comes to chicken sandwiches, I have a sleeper for you. It's the Shake Shack Chicken Shack Sandwich. Say that four times fast. But now you can get yourself a free one with the $10 purchase. Use the code word Woolworth and you get yourself a free Chicken Shack Sandwich from Shake Shack. Sandwich is fire too. They bought it in personally, had it, the pickles to perfection. Just use that code word Woolworth, get yourself a free sandwich. $10 or more. Only $10. My goodness. Only $10. Uh, did we get that, uh, Pete? Oh, download it. Okay, no, give me 10 seconds. Okay, very good. So over the weekend, baseball's had a lot of problems yeah. over the last uh, couple of weeks specifically. Years. <laughs> um, and, and I thought this was really well done by the Angels announcer. Uh, here is his take on all the problems with baseball. Negative story after negative story, scandal after scandal, a fiasco in Oakland. You have this, these ridiculous-looking jerseys. You have... The MLBPA challenging the league about the pitch clock today because of constant pitcher injuries. And yet, not to mention your global superstar is embroiled in a betting scandal. But on top of all of that, you have a young player trying to make a name for himself who has come up and reached base safely in every single game that he has played. And the league allows this scoring change to go on to end his streak, kill this story, a positive story that's happening in Major League Baseball. It is an absurdity. Yeah, I mean, when you think about all the positivity from all over the social media world, how it impressed everybody to start your career. He was just in college last year. He was still playing college baseball at this point. And then to have that taken away on a base hit. It was a base hit. It was a clear hit. It wasn't even really a borderline call. It was a clear base hit. You know, like I said in the pregame show, the NBA doesn't take an assist away from LeBron James and he's got a triple-double and he's trying to add on that, on that record. It just, it just doesn't happen. So the announcers were talking about Angels Angels' first baseman, Nolan Chenewell. He's I think, a rookie. I, I think that's I'm saying that name right. Um, he had an on-base streak to start his Major League career of 30 games. <laughs> it was snapped due to a retroactive scoring change. Yep. That I I didn't see the hit, but they're saying it was a clean hit. Baseball retroactively went back and changed it to an error, mm -hmm. uh, I believe, or something like that. Um, they did, and it stopped his streak. That's crazy. So it's like while you're going making records retroactive, why don't you just go change Armando Galarraga's Correct. perfect game too, right? Yeah, right. Um, they were saying it would never happen if it was like a LeBron James for a triple double or it something would. like that right that's what they're saying and baseball makes a lot of mistakes let's face it and one of them the biggest is the angels i was just looking at something oh, they didn't win do you see mike trout to start this season ryan Hermione? he's got 10 home runs all 10 of them are singles 
They're all solo. solo they're all solo home yeah. runs. Like, where's his help? Like, can, he has basically ruined his career. Can you imagine Mike Trout in a winning city with how he played? Like, can you imagine with the Jets? I mean, excuse me, the Jets, the Yankees? Yeah. Or the Phillies, which is a hometown team. He's been in baseball 12 years and, like, just wasted. I feel bad for Mike Trout. He's got paid, though. But, but. you know, the, he mentioned the letters on the back of the jerseys, too, the names. Oh, my God. I it mean, lo- it, it looks it, like t- Target. It does. That's exactly what it looks. It looks like a cheap jersey Literally. that you would get at Meyer or Target or Kmart or any of the other marts. <laughs> Walmart, big lots. You know, <laughs> seriously, <laughs> the, I have better like, jerseys. You, you you go to like you would go to school in your fake jersey and be Correct. embarrassed. Yes, because it wasn't like an yes. authentic jersey. You would go, you'd oh, be embarrassed. It would have the uh, the sausage logo yes. or some some sort of A game giveaway. Yeah, jersey. yeah, game giveaway. A cheap MetLife like, windbreaker. Oh man. Oh man, this one's got the low some uh, advertisement on the shirt. You know, it's like a giveaway jersey. It's like when the Swingman's came. It's like out. the worst. They have made it's when they left Majestic a few years ago, went to Nike, and then Nike, I guess, handed the reins over to Fanatics. Now Fanatics' owner came out, and this guy is like multi-billionaire. They have everything now. You can't like if you go to NFL shop, right? You might as well just say Fanatics.com. Right. Every yeah. sport is now controlled by fanatics. fanatics. Yeah. So you can't... Like also, me, uh, if I order a jersey now, mm-hmm. the thing is down on my knees. Yeah. Like, I knew Majestic fit me. I knew Nike ran this way. Fanatics, is it's garbage. It really... I'm saying it. It's yeah. garbage. It's when you get a late. Fanatics t-shirt, it's garbage. Yeah. It's it's terrible. And they're everywhere I don't know too. why they did this. Obviously, for money. Better... Yeah, probably better deals. It's horrible. Better deals for them. No, they they're still them. charging you these outrageous price, prices for a crap product. Do you see the Yankees road uniforms? No. They swept through them. Oh, yeah, I did see that. They're light gray. By what? the end of the game, they're they're soaking dark gray. It's, it's disgusting. It is it is crazy what's it's happening. It's the New York font. Right. It, it's small. It's, it's garbage. <laughs> and even like, you know, now there's a lot of talk about this pitch clock and maybe it's, uh, you know, potential. A potential reason for all these injuries. I do not buy that, by the way. I'll tell you what the injuries are for. It's because they're not allowed to grip the ball anymore. They're not allowed mean? to grip the ball. They can't use anything on the oh. ball anymore. So la- two years ago when Tyler Glass now had Tommy John surgery, he said when they took that spider tack away, he never used spider tack. He used rosin and suntan lotion just to hold the ball. Mm. He said when he didn't use it, he was holding the ball so tight in his palm. The next day he woke up, his whole body was sore. Mm. And then two starts later, there goes the elbow. Oh, wow. He's like, you use muscles you've never used before when you can't hold the ball loosely in your hand. Right. Loosely. Like when you really that grip a sense. football hard, you're not going to throw it really good. It's, it's, it's that way. If you hold the, a hockey stick too flick. hard, you, you got to yeah. be loose. And uh, the Major League Baseball has to let these pitchers use something. They just want more runs, and it, and it ain't working. And the, some of the best pitchers, look at Shohei. Enough, man. Let him grip the ball. Well, a lot of that too, Braylon, you know, and I, I think you see it a little bit in, in the NFL, in football with all the ACL injuries. Yeah. I think it's kind of like that in baseball for, for pitchers in Tommy John surgery. I think it starts it, – it's way deeper than just how you grip the ball or how – I think the way these kids start at such an early age at focusing on one sport is the death of these players when they get up to 18, 22, 24 years old. And, yeah. you know, their careers don't even start till after 26 years old after they've had the Tommy John surgery yep. um, or after they've had an ACL, ACL injury too, yeah. uh, for a football player. Because they're so specialized, and these muscles are so specialized. And Justin Verlander talked about this for a while, actually. Yeah. Yesterday, he's it was very good. It at was very good it. at it. Yeah. And he said, "Look, it's a combination. It's not one thing. Nothing is ever one thing. It's a combination of a bunch of factors. Yeah. And you know, at this really early age, where you're so focused on spinning the baseball and uh, 
exit velo or whatever it is <laughs> out of your hand. Spin and rate. I mean that sincerely, like your spin rate and your velocity and how you're doing it and everything is measured by this. You don't just go up there and pitch for contact. You're trying to blow it by guys. Yeah. Um, he's like, Verlander talked about how he and Scherzer had a conversation last year when they were coming up. They tried to like get get deep in a game, so they would say, "Oh, first pitch contact." I'm I'm pitching for contact here. Now, uh, you absolutely have to have this spin rate and this velocity that just blows these guys away. And he's like, the the hard part is that spin rate and velocity. You see that it works. Okay, so there's the problem too. Yeah. Is like this part works. This part will also injure you. Uh, I you know you. what I mean? So it's really hard to say, no, don't do this. Uh, something that works but for it you. Works. Um, yeah. But it works. I got Tommy John. Yeah, now you got <laughs> Tommy John. So yeah. um, he said uh, it, there could be a way to maybe uh, change that if you incentivize uh, teams to have your starting pitcher go through the lineup three times. You know, he's like, tie it to a DH. Uh, you get to keep your DH as long as your starting pitcher is in the game. Oh my god, that's a lot of rules. You know, man. I, mean, oh, wow. I understand, I know. but I know. You know, he's just spitballing here. It's yep. a brainstorm kind of operation on because once and I hate the analogy, but you can't put the toothpaste back in the tube. You can't the ball is? I mean, I mean, even look, I got uh, practice for my uh, seven-year-old tonight. You know what I, I mean? I got my JV girls, and tonight. you got these kids. They they want to spin the ball already. They yeah. want to spin it. What do you mean you want to spin it? You want to do everything that you see the guys that you look up to do. You want to be able to play like that. You want to spin the ball like those guys. So now you're getting taught to spin the ball at 8, 9, 10, 11 years old. That's a lot of work on an elbow by the time you turn 16, 18, 22, like you said, Ryan and my hey, arms worn out. My buddy's kid is 9 years old, and, and he's uh, going to be a pitcher this year. Yeah. And he's, ba oh, I got to throw that curveball. No, no, you're not throwing a hook. We couldn't my, even throw curves my, into a certain age. And we my were buddy is like, "No, you're not." To his kid, you know what I mean? You're not throwing a curveball. You're throwing, you know, you're throwing it down, and you try to throw a strike. Just throw it down the middle. Let he'll him be, hit it. He'll be trying to throw a curve. Yeah, yeah, by ten. No, by this year. <laughs> right. By this year. You know. By the way, speaking of curveballs, how's the Saint Joan of Arc? Uh, Good. I got. Uh, well, we last week we were off for Easter. Oh yeah. So this week I'm back at it tonight. So I'll see how many girls I have left. My man Tim Kane stole about four girls from me for varsity already. Oh, so I gotta I gotta work with what I got. We'll see we'll see what I got left tonight. It starts at a young age though, man. Yep. I'm telling you, and Braylon, you see this with football feel? players <laughs> and all these hurts. camps that they're doing now. You know what yeah. I mean? Like were were these seven on sevens and all these uh, elite camps a thing when you were in uh, when you were coming up? Not as young as they offer them now. Like when I was coming up, like you just had your regular camps, like Reggie McKenzie camp, which turned into the Jerome Bettis camp. But that was like twelve. Like the camps that for the elite stuff, the seven on seven. That stuff started around 13, 14, you know, 15 to a certain extent. Now these kids are young, man, seven on seven. I mean, seven years old. They're doing drills. They have coaches that are specialized in route running and technique and getting off the line. Like, he's seven. What the hell are you out here doing? Right. Eight, nine. But there's a ton of more camps now. But they start so much early. You saw Baby Gronk. I mean, he finally gave up. Gave up. He gave up. He was, he was uh, what do you call it? He was worn out. Mm -hmm. He was tied up. But at, that, at eight. At eight years he old. He retired at eight. The earliest retirement in the history of sports. <laughs> Eight years old, baby grunt. Uh, guys, a lot of wear and tear. Hey, big night uh, down at Little Caesars tonight. Absolutely, no doubt about it. And, and you know, I heard the guys on the um, on the Big D Energy show. Is this the and even the Morning Woodward show? I mean, yeah. it, 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 you do legitimately have to ask yourself: Is this the biggest game ever played at Little Caesars Arena for the Detroit Red Wings? I mean, you have to ask yourself that. It totally that. is. And, and we'll talk about that coming up. Are you going tonight, Maz? Hold that thought. We'll get that next. But first, a message from Swiss. Swiss. That's Ooh, right, boys. I have some good news and some bad news. The bad news is insurance rates are going up across the board in Michigan. The good news is that Swiss Insurance is here to help. Right now, more than ever, it's critical for you to have your insurance reviewed, and Swiss will make sure that your carrier does not slip in extra fees or raise deductibles. Call Mark at Swiss Insurance today or visit SwissINS.com and tell them Woodward Sports sent you. We'll be right back. And with the first pick in the 2024 media draft, Detroit selects 
Woodward Sports. Thank you for making us the number one digital network in Detroit. Stop searching for a vehicle and start finding one. Les Stanford Chevrolet Cadillac makes it easy. We harness the power of multiple dealerships and own the biggest selection of GM brands in the area to get you the car you need. With the Les Stanford Group, you'll have access to four different dealerships, providing you with more makes, more models, and more choices. We're connected to more than 1,000 vehicles. And with so many high-quality CPO vehicles available, you'll find new car quality at pre-owned prices. You can start and end your search at lesstanford.com today. Congratulations to the real coach of the year, Motor City Dan Campbell. Just put your head down and go to work. It's about to be fun, man. It's about to be fun. Woodward Sports. Where's the most convenient place to get that big fitness energy? It's Planet Fitness. Join today for just $1 down, $10 a month. With over 2,400 locations and equipment for every workout, you can get in, get energized, and get going. And with free fitness training and most clubs open 24 hours, everyone belongs in the judgment-free zone. So join today for $1 down, $10 a month, no commitment, cancel any time. A ton of fun, a ton of sports, and a ton of man meat. Welcome to the Woodward Heavyweights, live daily 5 to 7 p.m. on Woodward Sports. <laughs> at work and at home. We're there with smarter security solutions, featuring complete automation with customized alerts and more. For over 90 years, we've been the company that's been counted on to protect what matters most, all with personalized service and care. Right now, for a limited time, receive a free video device plus free installation with a new home system. Guardian Alarm, we protect Michigan. to the Detroit Lions and Sheila Hamm for the best season in Lions history. Now it's time to let Brad Holmes cook. Woodward Sports. Come to any Lady Jane's haircuts for men and claim your throne for a king's treatment from one of our talented stylists. Open seven days a week, walk in anytime. Just get to a Lady Jane's today and receive a precision haircut, scalp massage, hot lather neck shave, and a hot towel treatment. A haircut should not be a chore, it should be an experience. And that's exactly what Lady Jane's has to offer. Open seven days a week. Walk-ins are always welcome. There's always a location near you. Lady Jane's haircuts for men. It's wicked awesome. Is that an octopus in your pants or are you just happy to see me? <laughs> you should see what I did there. Go Red Wings from Octopi Experts Woodward Sports. Everybody, what happens when you see that black and yellow sign out in front of your house? It tells the bad guys, and especially people from Ohio State, one thing. Stay out. That's Stay a, out. Stay that's out. right. It's a new year. Let Guardian Alarm off you customized solutions from real experts. 24-7 professional monitoring and technology that are backed by people who have been proven to care, and that technology has been proven to work. Call 1-800. Stay, Stay out. out. That's 1-800. Stay, Stay out. out. Call them today and tell them Woodward Sports sent you. Back to the boys. All right, welcome back, guys. Big, big game tonight for the Detroit Red Wings at home against the Washington Capitals. Tom Masway, first and foremost, are you going? I'm not going tonight because I have practice with the Oh, that's right, that's right. Otherwise, I would have been there. Yeah. They're one game, one point ahead of the Caps right now, sitting in eighth. And they uh, got some good news yesterday. That is because, um, was it yesterday? Yeah, it was last night. The Pittsburgh Penguins went to overtime and lost. Yeah. Um, well, they only got a point, so they're tied. Absolutely. But the but, Red Wings yeah. owned the tiebreaker. And they have a game in hand Correct. as well. So uh, if the season ended today, the Detroit Red Wings would be in the playoffs. Oh, Braylon know. Edwards. Um, they are, as we mentioned, they are tied with Pittsburgh right now. They have a one-point lead against Washington and Philadelphia. Um, the New York Islanders are... Um, one point ahead. Absolutely, one point ahead of them as well. So there's they can go seventh. Absolutely, uh, five games to go. This is about as big of a stretch yep. as we've seen in the last ten years here. And it feels good, man. LCA hasn't seen anything like this. The Red Wings could make the playoffs. It's just it's the right time. The Lions get the NFC Championship. Red Wings may make the playoffs, and we think the Tigers can take that next step. But with the Red Wings, man, it it just feels like this. Let's say they make the playoffs. Just feel like we lack that that star. Yeah, like Dylan Larkin's a great leader. He's a great right. player. Uh, the the depth is there. Evander Kane has played well in spurts for us. Uh, DeBrinket as well. 
we don't have that Austin Matthews. We don't have yeah. like that Connor McDavid. Like, so even when we make the playoffs, because I'm gonna speak it into existence, like I don't. Do we go anywhere? Probably not. But uh, you know what? They got to make it this year yeah. because they got to get the experience. And Little Caesars, like we said, doesn't have any good memories. No right banners. <laughs> There's no memories. Like Ford Field was a, was desolate. Yeah. Until this past year, right? This is true. Ford Field now has history. Ford Field now is a home field advantage. Little Caesars mm -hmm. Arena has not been a home field advantage, a home court advantage for the Red Wings or the Pistons. And they haven't deserved it. But this year, the Red Wings have given you, the fans, what they wanted. They have got in a race. And it depends who they want to play. Who would you guys rather play? If you could finish 7th or 8th, you got the Rangers leading right now. So as it sits today... It would be Rangers Red Wings. It would be Red. It would be Rangers Red Wings, and it would be uh, Boston against the Islanders. Okay. So you either get the you either get Boston or you get the Rangers. Want Who the would Ra you rather play? I just want to be the, in the Rangers. Yeah, I want to play the Rangers. I want to play the Rangers too. It, you know what it is? It's memories. Like Bill, you think of the Palace of Auburn Hills. It's memories. You can remember when this shot was hit or that shot was hit or this concert. You know, you think of. The big house in Ann Arbor. Oh, where were you when Desmond Howard caught the catch against Notre Dame or this? Like, that's what the building doesn't have is memories. Memories you pull from. So I think this is a step in the right, in the right direction, getting to the playoffs. Need memories. I think Little Seas has already sent out to their season ticket holders and to other people that's uh, playoff tickets. I think you get in line for them now, basically, online. And if, if, it's, if it's happening... I think the place will be filled. I'll tell you why they also have to make the playoffs. Because they're in the playoffs right now if it ended today. There's five games to go. It sets up for you as good, if not as great, as it possibly could set up for you. You are playing two teams that you are in a battle with. You don't need any help yeah. from anybody. This isn't one of those, oh, there's five games to go and you need uh, this team to lose. You're going to be scoreboard watching over here in Pittsburgh. Well, Washington's got this game against Toronto. You've got okay. – you, you don't need any of that. Just you win. control your own destiny. And the two teams that you play are the two teams that are chasing you in back-to-back -back games. And, oh, by the way, you face one of the worst teams in the league twice in the last five games. A home-and-home -home with Montreal. I don't know how much better it could set up for you if it was possible. You not only should make the playoffs, you don't not only have to make the playoffs for the experience of making the playoffs, but because of the position you're in right now, you have to take a yeah. playoff berth. Yeah, if, were, if this was snatched from the fans in terms of normal going into the playoffs, the fans, and you snatched this from us, it's like, dang, here we go again. You gave up in the end, in the five games, Especially as you laid it out in terms of the teams they're playing, be pissed. Now, Stevie Weiserman, we gotta have some questions. Come on, Stevie Weiserman. Well, yeah, buddy. Right. Very good. All right. I <laughs> thought you were gonna say something there, Tom Masway. I apologize. Oh no, it's I don't okay. know why. Yeah, I, was, I was gonna go to uh, the Pistons. Oh, you're fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you're I want to go to the Pistons. Okay. Four games left in their dismal season. Mm. They have 13 wins. So if they went out. And there's the games they're playing at the Sixers. Home finale Thursday. 15 and a half point underdogs tonight. <laughs> home, home finale against the Bulls. And then at the Mavs. And then at Victor Wembayana. How perfect is that? Hey. At the Spurs to end the season. They stole Victor from us. Victor is a, unbelievable. He'll be the best player in the NBA he will. in two years. He will. Mm -hmm. two so years if they went out, yeah. they tie last year's record of 17 wins. I don't know how you allow the guy to continue. And by the guy, I'm talking about Troy Weaver. I, I just, <laughs> yeah, I don't even know how you're not a serious franchise. Can't be. They don't have a serious owner. You have an owner. We always get back to Tom Gorse, but it's the truth. You have an owner that's not present. The way to win, it starts at the top and it trickles down. Man, the owner's not involved. He's not invested. That really seem like he cares. Like he just throws money at problems. Who was the major injury this year? Did they have a major injury where they were? Jalen Duran missed a lot of time. Well, okay. they made a trade. They traded away two of their more, well, Alec Burks and uh, Bohan. You know, Bohan. They Bowman, traded. Yeah. They I traded think... those two offensive guys away. And Cam, uh, excuse me, uh, Cade. Cade has been up and down all year. You know, injured here, plays here, plays there. The disaster 
Why is it's, a, it, it's a disaster of a season. Why is it every year when the Pistons should have the number one pick, which is almost every season, it seems like, why is the draft just, suck? It, why does it suck? I, I guarantee this draft is being told by a lot of people to be potentially one of the worst well, we've look had. Look at the K draft. Anthony, that's where I was going. Yeah. K Cunningham still to me is not a number one pick overall. No. He's not. And he, uh, no, I'm sorry. We're going to get off. the number one pick, and it's going to be another bump. Right, uh, but I, th that's the point I'm trying to make. Last year, Cade Cunningham was out all season. They were trying to tank and get the number one pick. They tried to tank and be bad enough to win 17 games last year. Fourth pick. This year, with Cade, with Jaden, with Jalen, with all these guys. Sorry, Thompson. Um, 13 wins. How does this no. general manager, how is he still employed? I mean, the, the owner's not going to fire himself. Right. Okay, the owner's not going to sell the team. The owner bought the team for $325 million. It's worth $3 billion now. Not going to sell the team. Yeah. But Not at all. I mean. It's just been a dismal year, too, because I still can't serious. figure out why Monty Williams was playing Killian Hayes over Jay Knight. Hey, we. I still need. I, I still need an answer for that. Do you think? Do you think he returns next year, or take a, or does he take a buyout? Money. Yeah. I think he returns. I yeah, in, unless he unless he does a deal in which he uh goes to Tom Gordon and say, hey, look, man, I'm, maybe maybe I rush back to maybe the money, maybe figure it out. But no, because Tom Gordon is not going to just like revet the process. I think he stays. Mm. Terrible. It is ugly, man. It is so unfortunate. Bring up, bring up the NBA's uh, playoff run here, right? Yeah. Give, me the, give me the top eight in each in each league. I want to hear Braylon uh, tell me who's winning. Uh, I'll, I'll take a guess who's winning. Well, first of all, Boston, Milwaukee play tonight. The yeah. Magic are third in the East. <laughs> it, they they are one game out of being second in the the East. The Orlando Magic, and just stick with the Pistons for okay. a second, okay? The Orlando Magic. Okay, they had the number one pick a couple of years ago. They took the kid from Duke. Paulo yep. Bancaro. Paulo Bancaro. They're one game out of being the second seed in the East. That is how you rebuild a franchise. And they're trying to sign okay? the Clay Thompson. That is how you rebuild a franchise. It is disgusting. Your contemporaries, um, Orlando, Cleveland, um, who Cleveland else? was the number two seed last Houston. year. Houston. Houston. Houston not going to make the playoffs this year, but they have 38 wins. Wow. And exciting. Jalen you know, Green is exciting. The, yeah, they have 38 wins. Um, Green's playing good? Oh, so good. They went and got Fred Van Vliet, though. They went and got Fred right. Van Vliet, won a championship with the Toronto Raptors. It's talking about a GM making some moves to help his franchise out. You look at Franz Wagner balling down there with the Magic. You're trying to get Klay Thompson in the offseason, so I'm being told. So they care. But once again, they're tired of losing. At some point, Ryan Armani, and we keep talking about it with Tom Gordon, but at some point, you got to be tired of losing. Like You got to be tired of waking up and looking at your team, and it's just abysmal. You're looking at the win column and the loss column, and every time it's just worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. You don't, I, I don't know how I react, but like, <laughs> I well, I it. think I, I I think part of the, the care part of the problem with the Detroit Pistons is as a fan, yeah. you care too much. Yeah, you feel like, and I I, I get I, this happens with a lot of organizations. It feels like. You care more than they do about mm, winning. Yeah. And when you get to that point, and I think, I think, you know, many of us are at that point with the Detroit Pistons. Some people might have been at that point with the Lions, uh, with the Tigers, uh, with Chris Illich in the past. But you feel like because the team is so bad for so long and you keep the same people, it's like, why do I care so much? If you don't care about the product that you're putting out, why do I care so much? And it, yeah. it, 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 I really do believe that's at the crux of so many of the different issues. Um, like, fans care too much. And if you have an owner that doesn't, that continues to employ this general manager, think about this for a second, folks. And I just have to say this out loud one more time. Last year, the Pistons' best player was out the entire year, and they tried to tank. 
They tried to lose as many games as possible to get the number one pick, and they won 17 games. Yeah. This year, everybody healthy for the most part. Nothing season ending. True. All year. They I have saw won Thompson a couple weeks ago. They have won 13 games. Fire the general manager. Yeah. Please, for the love of God, even if it's just to do something, even if it's just to say. We, you cannot allow him to pick another player or sign another free agent. You can't do it. Yeah. Cannot allow. Who's coming here? Nobody. No, well, no. Anybody, if you get the money. Obviously, look at Monty Williams. Monty didn't want to come, but then you dangle that bag in front yeah, of you. Yeah, but it's like, another Ben Gordon, Charlie right. Villanueva free uh, agency. Don't matter. They just use the money to sign two guys that really aren't going to help you. Dead franchise. Um, guys, That's we're going to take a break. Uh, something happened big in the city today. We'll show you that coming up next. But first, a message from Nothing. Stanford, Chevrolet, right, Cadillac, Buick, hey, GMC. Go. What happens when you run a great business for over 50 years? You expand and offer more products to more people. That's exactly what Les Stanford did by adding Les Stanford, Buick, GMC. They offer the same great service that customers have come to know and trust. Buick, GMC dealership located in Ferndale on Woodward Avenue, just south of Nine Mile. And if you're looking for a Chevy or Cadillac, Les Stanford in Dearborn, where they have been on Michigan Avenue for over 55 years. You can find the brand you want under one umbrella. LesStanford.com, LesStanford.com. Together, let's drive. Congratulations to the real coach of the year, Motor City Dan Campbell. Just put your head down and go to work. It's about to be fun, man. It's about to be fun. Woodward Sports. Where's the most convenient place to get that big fitness energy? It's Planet Fitness. Join today for just $1 down, $10 a month. With over 2,400 locations and equipment for every workout, you can get in, get energized, and get going. And with free fitness training and most clubs open 24 hours, everyone belongs in the judgment-free zone. So join today for $1 down, $10 a month, no commitment, cancel any time. Is that an octopus in your pants, or are you just happy to see me? <laughs> see what I did there? Go Red Wings! From Octopi Experts, Woodward Sports. To any Lady Jane's haircuts for men and claim your throne for a king's treatment from one of our talented stylists. Open seven days a week, walk in anytime. Just get to a Lady Jane's today and receive a precision haircut, scalp massage, hot lather neck shave, and a hot towel treatment. A haircut should not be a chore. It should be an experience. And that's exactly what Lady Jane's has to offer. Open seven days a week, walk-ins are always welcome. There's always a location near you. Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men, it's wicked awesome. A ton of fun, a ton of sports, and a ton of man meat. Welcome to the Woodward Heavyweights, live daily 5 to 7 p.m. on Woodward Sports. <laughs> Forget to go to shop.woodwardsports.com. Get the hoodies, the tees, the hats that are guaranteed to turn heads. Also, that new political style t shirt with the Brad Holmes, Dan Campbell. That's a ticket you'd vote for. That's a ticket I'd vote for, too. Again, go to shop.woodwardsports.com. Get all the latest Detroit sports gear that'll turn the heads. Here we go. Back to the boys. All right, everybody. Thanks so much. Uh, something happened big in the city today. Are you kidding me? You guys ready for it? You yeah. guys ready for it? Ready Here clips? it is. This is courtesy of the Detroit News. Oh. On oh, look at this. Detroit. There you go. There's your Hollywood style sign. Now, I don't know why it's a Hollywood style sign. I guess they just spell out a city. Yeah, they just right? spell it out. It's now. I don't know. I'm trying to figure this out here. Kind of small. Yeah. What do you guys think? I think it's nice. I think it'd be cool. It's nice. It'd be something different. Y yeah. It's like the football bridges they built for uh, Super Bowl Forty. Right. On I ninety four. You see those still? Oh, absolutely. On your way to on your way you to the airport. Yeah. That, yep, that, right. that, bridge, that bridge is trash. <laughs> it, it's trash already. <laughs> but just uh, it's brand new. Well, it's only well. Two thousand six. Yeah, yeah, it's it's not that new, I guess. I just thought for the money they spent, they could have did a better job. Like, I'm, this is a basic bridge. Remember they painted the walls white with the yeah. blue wavy white line. That, I feel the same when, way. When about the Super the Bowl side. came, and they're doing the same thing. What are they doing, right? You know more than me. I mean, you do the nine every day. What are they doing downtown to dress it up for the draft? No idea. No. Well, yeah. Because I mean, they've got they've got like hundreds of pop-up stores pop, like yeah. in downtown so you're you're filling all of the vacant uh storefronts all of the vacant storefronts true. pop-up shops so 
I mean, you will have lights on every building. Yeah. You will have pop-up shops in every vacant building. It will uh, look beautiful. So things like that. You have security. Yeah, you have be nice. you have security down there like crazy. You have uh, a sanitation crews like crazy picking up every piece of paper, uh, every uh, piece of trash. It will look pristine. So that's essentially what people are doing down there uh, right now to get ready yeah, for right. the draft. And the Tigers it, are going to yeah. be home that weekend as well. They do a great job. I remember going to the Grand Prix last year, just like how they had the Grand Prix set up and the different things that they did and the different lighting. So they know how to put on, and I think this is going to be a major one for Detroit to really kind of show who we are moving forward. A lot right. of people with a lot of opinions about Detroit. This is a chance for us to truly show up and show out, and I definitely think – the city is going to do that. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, and there's going to be little Detroit signs across the way, like at different areas throughout Detroit. Like there's one at I-94 Maross. There's one going up. There's uh, going to be different uh, situations. I, I, are you guys going to the draft, like outside of like maybe even working it? Like do you, does that interest you? Because the big crowds don't interest me. Like yeah. if I don't have to be at the draft, I'm not going to be at the draft kind of thing. Like now I'm I'm so happy that it's here. Right. But I'm like I want I want to experience yeah. it. I want to go at least Friday and a little bit of Saturday. And I think that's yeah. part of where I'm at. I know because of the job, you like I will experience it. Yeah. yeah. So um that's part Are of it. Are you guys doing any live shots? Yeah, we'll be live there Thursday morning. Okay. By Friday? Uh I don't think friday i think we'll be there doing live thursday morning that's good yeah so i'll be down there um and then um yeah i don't know it'll be exciting i know my family my family all wants to go my kids are raring to go i've had some of the lady jane's girls come into the office hey man you got any insight on how we can get to the draft you right know, I, there's a lot of people asking yeah on, on because it, it's interesting man it's but you know when you see it in all these different cities. Like, I went to it when I was younger, you know, in New York several times. I even went to a USFL draft. I mean, I'm a, that kind of a guy. <laughs> Pete. But that was in a place. That was at Madison Square Garden at the Felt Forum. That was at the Roosevelt Ho Hotel. This one's outdoors, and it's, and it's in, a, in, in the middle of a city on a big city street on Woodward and, and uh, down in Campus Marshes. It's going to look cool. Art Plot. It's going yeah. to be fantastic. I pray that Mother Nature takes good care of us. That weekend. That's all. I I, I got to take a look at it, man. I, it's the NFL. I also want to see how it stacks up. I want to see Braylon up right. on the stage. Oh, you're going to see me on Friday. But, like, uh, I remember the first time I noticed that I actually liked it was the Nashville one. When they were, not, yeah, when they were in Nashville. They did a nice the title, job. They did a really good job. I said, oh, man, that'd be cool to get the draft. Now we have the draft. See how we do. Um, April 25th, all this buildup, and it's two weeks from Thursday, it's going to be a fa fantastic uh, event in this city. Uh, some of the people in the chat um, uh, say, my brother-in-law and nephew are going to the NFL draft. Ryan, my nephew is a huge football fan. Uh, Prop Deuce says, I prefer to watch it on TV, LOL. And, you know, there is a part of that. You want to see what other people are seeing. Like, you want to see what the um, experience uh, is like. Yeah around the country too i mean i, I want to go and i will go but part of that is like i like watching nfl yeah. games on tv i Same. would rather go i would rather watch an nfl game on tv than go to the game i think I like this it. is the draft it's different i know but it's like i like watching things on tv you just don't want to deal with the parking and I'm all like, that kind of jazz. well the parking is going to be miserable it that's is. a big part of it i don't know shuttles eastern market i think one of the things is that what doing? the deal is Part yeah. Of, yeah, you know, shuttles from Eastern Mark. But even like if you're doing a draft party, if you are working like a draft, like where do you park? You know, that's going to be a big thing. How how soon do they close the streets? These I are, actually are, tell you, but I'll be staying down there the whole week. Right, that's what you got to do is get a hotel room and just set up shop. Thank you, Jets. Yeah. Oh, so the Jets got you. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I'll be down there. Uh, Let's check in. Uh, Tuesday. <laughs> Tuesday. I was talking about for me. Oh. <laughs> That's great. Come on over, man. Hang on. I will, bud. Uh, RJ Graham says Detroit better show out for the draft. He's right. Uh, Mike G says this show is maz-tastic. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Uh, also, Side note. Yeah, please. 
Nine days, somebody said, I can't get the, uh, the credit. Forgot who it was that popped up there. Pete does a great job. Uniform reveal. Looking Getting close. To it. I don't think it's going to be some dramatic thing like I thought it would be in the past, which is fine. Right. I'm good with that. What are they going to tweak? The color? Huh? Are they going to tweak the tweak colors? Tweak the color. Are they going to put some... Maybe make a different lion? No. No? No. You think they're going to keep the same lion? They better. You like that fierce lion? I love fierce lion. I don't like all the stripes around them, mm. all the... Gra- I just want plain old leaping lion back on there. Well, I'll take... I'll take Fierce Lion or I'll take our Circus Lion that we used to have. I, <laughs> I just love I love the logo. I do. Mm. Very hard to draw, though. I'm a doodler, and yeah, I, can't, I can never draw you, the lion. You I, do? I, I suck at drawing the lion. I got to see, see, see what you do to him, man. I'm a good doodler. I can do the Vikings uh, horn easy. Okay. San Francisco's easy. That's Jets. how I used to stay up in class when G-Man I was uh, tired. Easy. My, whole, my whole career in, in grammar school was drawing helmets. Same. Mm. That's all well, I did. Helmets, but. helmets and logos. What are you guys watching tonight? Tigers have already played. They've it's won. Tuesday. That's right. It's There's a, a l- Tuesday, so the Pistons play the 76. 76ers are fi- I'm just yeah, I'm not watching 15 that. and a half point favorite. There is one good NBA oh, game. It, it's some good NBA games on tonight. Oh, my God. The Red Wings. Red Wings. Yeah, 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 yeah. Forgot about you got that. Lakers we just and, talked about You got it. Lakers and Warriors tonight. Yeah. It's getting close to playoff time, though, man. Teams are starting to heat up a little bit. Lakers and Warriors play tonight. Warriors are fake. Do the Red Wings win tonight? Yes. Red Wings win tonight. Braylon? Yes. Um, in regulation. In regulation. Ooh, in regulation. Oh, that's big boy. That's a big boy call out. Give me, give me, give me three one wings in regulation. Three one wings. Um, they have, uh, let's see, I think they got an eight. Yeah, they did. They beat, uh, they beat the Capitals eight to three uh, the last time they played at uh, Joe Lewis or. At Little Caesars Arena, they lost four three in overtime in Washington. So this is the third and final matchup against the Caps. So we'll see what happens. All right, guys, enjoy the game tonight. Bray, get us out of here. Hey, the gang's all here. We are back, and there will be more to talk about. Love you guys. Miss you. Appreciate you guys for tuning in. We are Armani Edwards and Maz. Hell of a show by you, my man Mike Silent Mike. Peace, Spivak. Appreciate you. Oh, Maz. He did a pretty good job, man, with the rundown I in, saw. In, in your absence, man. I got to got shout my boy out, man. Thank you, my friend. We'll see yeah, you guys tomorrow. You. He's a good man. Appreciate you. Good job, Mike. See you guys.